You are watching SWAC Football on ESPN3. From Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, it's the Prairie View A&M Panthers versus the Jackson State Tigers. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Butch Alcindor along with Lee Mont Williams. And this afternoon, these two teams have a lot in common. Yeah. The visiting Panthers come in with a 3-5 and five record. They are also 2-2 two and two in swag play. And on the other side, the Tigers are 3-4. and four. But they yeah. are two and two in conference play. So what will be the difference on the field today? And Bush, to me, it's very simple. It's turnovers. Whoever played mistake-free football here is going to be successful this afternoon. Okay. Well, let's take a look now at some players to keep an eye on. And for Prairie View, they are all about the run. So you need to watch number one, the one <laughs> Tucker. Of course, he's one of the yeah. best running backs in the state. He's already rushed for over 200 yards and two games this season. Yeah, Tucker out of Terrell, Texas is outstanding. He's the true workhorse for the Panthers offense this season. The true heart and soul, a very elusive running back, has great lateral vision as well. But if he gets going fast in the first half, you got to watch out for the Panthers offense. Okay, and for the homestanding Jackson State Tigers, well, their strength on defense is the defensive line. And number 10, Malik Hamner may be the best of the bunch. He has five tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Hamner, the 6'4 senior, is the true leader in the 3-4 defensive front. And their defensive front is outstanding for shutting down the run in the inside, anticipate them to shut down the Panthers' offense and force the, the football to go to the outside for their linebackers. Well, the table is set this afternoon, and dinner is ready to be served. Kickoff between the Panthers and the Tigers is coming up next on ESPN3. Pro Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 9 on ESPN, presented by PlayStation. Glad to have you with us this afternoon, Butch Allison Dorn, Lemont Williams, for this SWAC showdown between the Prairie View Panthers and the Jackson State Tigers. You can see they're getting set for the opening tip. The coin toss at midfield is going on as we speak. Of course, the Prairie View Panthers, they've won the last four in this series. Last year, they actually won the game 38-9. to So Prairie View has kind of dominated this series in recent history. And Prairie View needs to find their swagger again. I mean, after last week loss at home, against Alcorn State on their homecoming. Going in a tough environment like Jackson State here, Prairie View needs to get off to a fast start. And as we take a look at the SWAC standings in the Western Conference, you can see the Prairie View Panthers right there as we said on the top. They are 3-5, and five, but 2-2 two and two in conference play, and with Southern at 4-1, and one, it's still possible. Yeah, it's a very competitive conference right now in the SWAC West. As you can see, Prairie View at number 3, Southern's leading the conference. But you can't count out Bramblin State. There's a team that you know Southern is going to face them later in the season. That matchup is going to be impressive. Yes, it is right there. And as we go to the east now, let's take a look at the standings here. Jackson State right in the middle, but you can see Alcorn State at 7-2. and two. They are running away with it. But Jackson State has an interesting situation going on there. So they would love to win out and put themselves at least in the hunt. Yeah, with well, Jackson State changing up their head coach here midseason, they want to kind of finish off the, off the season very strong. As Alcorn State leads the East Conference, anticipate them to kind of continue to have that success as Jackson State try to creep up in the conference play. Okay, while we have a second, let's meet the coaches for today's game. Of course, from the visiting Panthers, Eric Dooley is in his first season at PV. He spent the last four years as offensive coordinator, leading the high-powered grambling attack. And for this team, the Jackson State Tigers, as Lee Martin mentioned, John Hendrick, who up until last week was the defensive coordinator for the Tigers before head coach Tony Hughes was released from his contract. Now Hendricks, Hendrick is the interim head coach, but he will remain the defensive coordinator also, so he will have to do double duty for the remainder of the season. And what Coach Hendricks talked about uh, to us, Bush, this week, as far as in the conference call, is just finishing up strong, finishing up what Coach Tony uh, Hughes started here at the program for Jackson State. Unfortunately, Coach Hughes was removed, but Coach Hendrick has some experience as an interim head coach, and he's going to play double duties, like you stated, head coach as well as defensive coordinator. That defensive unit is going to be fired up in his first half. Yeah, he said the first thing he did was talk to the team, and he told them, he said, I wanted to be a head coach again, but not like this. This is not the way I wanted to get the job. And as we look down on the field, we can see the t uh, Panthers getting set to return the opening kickoff, Prairie View. Back to return the kickoff, and we're going to see Adrian Salazar, and we are underway in Jackson, Mississippi. 
And it is a fair caught right there. So the Panthers will take over first and 10 from the 25-yard line. They will start. And we expect to see Jalen Morton coming out at quarterback in this one. Yeah, Jaden Morton is a dual-threat quarterback, big-frame quarterback as well as 6'3", 230. You know, you want to see Morton kind of present himself as a pocket present on the, on the, on the road here against Jackson State. However, when things start to fall apart, he has a leg strength to be able to take off and pick up the first down. The Panthers will be operating in the white jerseys today. As you see them come out of the huddle, they will first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Jalen Morton, the 6'3", 230-pound junior, will be at quarterback. And he hands right away to Dewanye Tucker, and he goes for five yards around the left side. And he is so dangerous. The little guy, when you talk about Tucker, 5'6", 175 pounds, but he's explosive. Very explosive, and his lateral movement is unbelievable. He has the opportunity to be able to establish himself on the outside end against a 3-4 Jackson State defense. Okay, second down and about six to go for the Panthers. Martin's going to pile. Now he pulls it down, steps up in the pocket, and picks up as much as he can get before he is taken down right there by number 52, Darius Woods, the six foot, 245 pound senior from Jacksonville, Florida. And what we're seeing right now, Butch, from Prayer View is up tempo style offense. They're hurrying up to the offensive line to kind of catch Jackson State off defensively. And the official rushes in. He wants to make sure the football is set. But the Panthers, you are exactly right. They are trying to go with some up tempo football early in this ball game as they come up on third down. Jalen Martin puts a man in motion. Fakes the handoff, keeps it right up the middle, and he's going to be very close to a first down. And in fact, I think the quarterback may have it. That's one of the good things about him. He's a threat to run the football and to pass the football. And yeah. he, we got to talk to their coach this week. He said he's a very intelligent player. A very intelligent player and very big frame quarterback at 6'3". He can take those, absorb those type of hits in the inside. Panthers come right back to the run. They go straight ahead. This time it goes to Caleb Broach on the carry, and they go right back to the line of scrimmage. So Prairie View, starting with the hurry-up offense, Eric Dooley has his team pacing, playing pace early on in this ballgame, trying to pick up the tempo. This time, Martin looking to throw it. Fires deep, has a man open, and he overshot him. That was number seven, Zarian Holcomb, but he was wide open in the middle of that zone, and he was just a little too strong on that pass. Yeah, Butch, I don't really don't know what happened on that last play. Holcomb had the soft spot there in the zone play against Jackson State defense. It just seems like maybe the sun got in his eyes. He couldn't locate the football. Morton still at quarterback. Second down. He's going to change the play now. He has three wide receivers down to his right at the bottom of the screen. This is a very explosive Prairie View A&M offense. They know how to put points on the board. Martin's going to throw it again under pressure, and the contact was made in the backfield, and that caused the incomplete pass. He was trying to go to Holcomb again. Zarian Holcomb looked like he was open again, but the pressure on Martin changed everything. Good pressure, good call there by the defensive coordinator, Coach Hendricks, as well as the interim coach. He forced the linebackers to come up the middle Made Morton uncomfortable, rushed that pass there, forcing a three and out. Outstanding job for the Tigers here in front of their home fans. So the Panthers will have to punt it away, and that will bring on Zach Elder. He's averaging 33.7 yards a kick. Gets this one away. Line drive kick, and it's going to be short, and it goes out of bounds near the 40-yard line. So the Tigers from Jackson State are going to start with excellent field position as they take over for their first possession of the ballgame. And one thing I want to see early on for Jackson State offense is their quarterback play. We talked about the, to the head coach this week, Butch, and he wants to see it's an open competition that he stayed in. He wants to see who's going to compete for that quarterback spot, and it looks like they're coming out. We're yeah. number five right now as a starting quarterback. Yeah, he said the starting quarterback would be a game-time decision between number 12, Derek Ponder, and number five, Jared Hayes. And right now the nod goes to Jared Hayes. He's on the field, six foot, 190-pound senior from central Louisiana, and he starts it out with the pass that is a little too low. He was trying to throw it over there and get someone coming out of the backfield, but it's an incompleted pass. Jackson State switches up their offense from early on in the season. It was more of a passing team, committed more to the running game the last two games. But now it seems like they want to spread out Prairie View defensively and take advantage of the outside. Yeah, he was trying to hit Warren Newman with that swing pass. The pass was low. 
and it's incomplete. Newman goes in motion this time. And the pass near the sidelines is caught by number 10, Rameek Wallace. And we will see where the officials mark it. They say it's a first down, so he did get a foot in bounds. A nice catch by Rameek Wallace. Excellent pitch and catch there from Hayes to Wallace. As you can see, Wallace slide that back leg to be able to pick up the first down and the reception. You know, when you talk about the two Jackson State quarterbacks, Jared Hayes is the better runner of the two, but that was a pretty good pass for the first down. So this time, here comes the blitz, and he hands off, and it looks like Quentin Brown falls forward for a gain of about two yards there, but the Panthers were trying to bring some of the heat in the backfield. And if you're Jackson State offensively, if you want to be competitive in this first half, you have to bring a balanced attack. You have to run the football against the Prairie View uh, defense and keep them off balance. Your running game is going to be your biggest uh, asset here in this first quarter. So that'll bring up second down for Jared Hayes. Second and seven for Hayes and the Tigers. He has Quentin Brown in the backfield, puts him in motion. Hayes fires underneath, has his man. It's a completed pass and a nice gain right there for the Tigers as they continue to move the football upfield. That's Jordan Williams with a good catch. He's a 6'2", 180-pound senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Good job there by Williams being able to find that soft spot there against, the Jack against Prairie View defense. Hayes saw him early on, got him the football, so he'd be able to make a move and pick up three yards. One of the things we need to mention, Lee Mott, is one of the running backs, Keyshawn Harper, who normally gets a lot of playing time, he has a bad ankle, so we may not see him today. This time, the give goes to Jordan Johnson. He's been their top runner so far this season, but Johnson has no place to go. The Panthers are quickly there to make the stop. Isaac Claiborne, one of the Panthers there to make the hit. But a nice run picks up a first down for the Jackson State Tigers. Now, you know, you're talking about that, so that's why Quentin Brown was in the backfield early on. So we're going to see Quentin Brown and maybe even number 22, Javon Brown. No relations, just, <laughs> just a common name there. So uh, we may have a Brown and Brown backfield at some point today. So Jared Hayes in at quarterback. And now it looks like we have a timeout on the field. As Jackson State, Jared Hayes comes over to talk to his coach. And while he does that, we are going to take a timeout in the booth. No score early in the ballgame. Prairie View at Jackson State. Station. And welcome back to Jackson, Mississippi. The Jackson State Tigers playing host to Prairie View A&M today. Jackson State with the football in blue. And the handoff goes to Jordan Johnson. He's been their leading running back so far this year. He has 27 carries for about 460 yards and two touchdowns, averaging 64 yards a game. So they, they have got to generate some more offense if they want to come away with a victory today. And it starts up front for Jackson State. It's going to be their offensive line. Their offensive line has to play big here at home in front of their home fans and get them into this game because their front, their front five offensive line can be very competitive against Prairie View. Hayes puts Johnson in motion, fakes a pass to him, comes back with a screen the opposite way, and it's breaking tackles there is Quentin Brown, and he's finally taken down right there. A good tackle, and it actually saved a big play because it could have been a lot bigger. Drake Cheatham came on to make the stop for the Panthers. Nice play call there by the offensive coordinator for Jackson State. As you can see, Brown making the defenders miss, going through three defenders as the last one picks him up. Excellent job there, excellent execution for the Tigers offense. Just a well-designed screen play, and they almost they almost broke it for a huge <laughs> gain there. So it's going to, going to be a first down for the Tigers. This time the handoff goes to Johnson inside, and he picks up about three yards before he's wrestled to the turf. Willie Green, one of the Panthers there to secure the tackle. And Butch, I like what I'm seeing right now from the Tigers offensively. I talked about them having a balanced attack against Prairie View defensively. Their running game, they're leaning more on the offensive line and depending more on their running backs here in the last two series. Jordan Johnson has been the top running back all season for the Tigers. He's one of those guys, he has a good burst, and he's very deceptive. He doesn't look like he's that fast, but he can get into your secondary in a hurry. So this time, Johnson in the backfield with Brown. Looking deep into the end zone and a great catch, and then he falls into the cannon. So I don't know if he got hurt on the play. I think he was out of bounds, but he made an Odell Beckham-like catch, and then he falls into the 
Cannon, which was a little too close there in the back of the end zone as they try to help him up. But what a play. Hayes lofted the ball high into the end zone, and it was caught out of bounds, and it was very close to being a touchdown. And now the concern is with the player. And let's try to see if we can figure out who it is. Yeah, I'm very concerned for this player. As you can see right there, he goes up with the one hand. Excellent job. But the back of his head yeah. hits the cannon as he hits the ground, unfortunately. So he looks like he's a little... He's on his feet. That's the most important part. Yeah, that's number 10, Rameek Wallace, the 6'2", 195-pound junior from Waynesboro, Mississippi. But you're absolutely right, and somebody is going to be in trouble for leaving that cannon <laughs> where they left the cannon because you expect to get hit on the yeah. field. You don't expect to hit your head on a And I think he's all right. You can see him holding up his mm -hmm. arm like, what happened there? Uh, but the Tigers, that close to coming up with a touchdown. So now that sets up a third and seven for Hayes. A little roll out to his right. Fires underneath, has a man. That is caught by Warren Newman. And that should be a first down for the Tigers. And they should be operating now out of a first and goal to go situation. Nice play called there, Butch, by the offensive coordinator. Rolling out Hayes to be able to extend the play and get his lineman in front of the defenders. Nice pitch and catch there to his receiver to pick up the first down and get in the red zone. Hey, this has been a great drive by the Tigers to start this game because if you're a visiting team, you want to come in, you're hoping to force the three and out, but Jackson State has done a great job of mixing up the pass and, and the run on this drive that's now first and goal for the Tigers. And the handoff goes to Johnson, and he just powers his way forward for about three or four yards inside. And also what, is the, what it does, uh, Butch, for the home team is to control the clock. You want to control the clock at home, that means you control the momentum. And right now, the Tigers have all the momentum as they're forcing their way down the Panthers' defense and might get the opportunity to score a touchdown here before the first quarter ends. So Jared Johnson was the pick at quarterback today. Coach Hedrick told us it was going to be a game-time decision between Derek Ponder, who's supposed to be the better passer, and Jared Hayes, who's come out and conducted this drive to open the game. So second and goal to go for the Tigers. Hayes turns and hands to Johnson. Breaks a tackle and then bangs his way into the end zone. And the Tigers from Jackson State are on the scoreboard first as Jordan Johnson scores his third touchdown of the year. Nice way to kind of finish off that drive, that long drive by the Jackson State Tiger offense. And you see Johnson right here, a simple handoff. Great blocking up front from the offensive line as well as the fullback. Johnson earning his third touchdown, rushing touchdown here this season as he celebrates in the back of the end zone. You know, we said he was deceptive, and he showed some of it on that. He could have been stopped for a loss in the backfield, but he did a great job of breaking that tackle and getting it into the end zone. We saw Scott Johnson, our referee there, and it appears the Tigers are going to line up and go for two here. Back to pass as Hayes fires over the middle, trying to set something up inside and nothing doing there. He's going to be stacked up. So we will pause for a timeout now. We will be back with more action from Jackson, Mississippi between Prairie View and Jackson State. brag about every week it matters anybody can lose to anybody on a week-to-week -week basis it's on the committee to look at the entire body of work forget the metrics just who's a better team if they went out it'll be as good as any one lost game at the end of the year the committee's going by resume it's going to be chaos by the time we get to december the college football playoff top 25 ranking show tuesday at 9 on espn presented by playstation And as you can see, the touchdown pass right there from Hayes into the end zone to Romello Shoemake is a touchdown. The other touchdown, there was a penalty on the play. It did not count the touchdown run by Johnson. So they come right back, and this time Hayes with the pass to Romello Shoemake, the 5'10", 185-pound senior from Georgia. And so that is the touchdown for the Jackson State Tigers. And you can see Jackson, uh, Jackson State are fired up on the sideline as they negated the first touchdown. But what 
uh, resilient and found a way to get back into the end zone. They earned that touchdown there. Hayes connecting with Shoemaker. And Kristen Jackman adds the extra point. So early in the ball game, the homestanding Tigers from Jackson State find themselves with a 7-0 lead. We will be right back in just a minute. To get to the top, you got to go all the way up. Don't miss the Audi 2018 MLS Cup playoffs today on ESPN. And welcome back, everyone. The Jackson State Tigers lead the Prairie View A&M Panthers 7-0. We have 6.46 to go here in the first quarter, and the homestanding Tigers break out in front after a touchdown pass from Jared Hayes. Very impressive drive there by the Tigers. Adding in the running game, gave them a balanced attack, but put them in the red zone. They finished off the passing play. I really like what I'm seeing out of the Tigers' offense here in this first quarter. This is Christian Mosley right here on the kickoff return, and he's in a lot of trouble. He dropped the football, and the Tigers say they have recovered at the two-yard line, so a huge mistake for the Prairie View Panthers. Christian Mosley on the kickoff return was stripped, and the Tigers recovered. Huge break there for, for Jackson State on the special teams. I talked about turnovers and mistakes right there. Prairie View committed the first turnover mistake on the road, giving the ball back to Jackson State in excellent field position on the second yard line. <laughs> that offense got to be pumped up right now in front of their home fans. Well, that's a turnover, but it's, it's a turnover on the two-yard line. So uh, that's a situation where you're probably going to give away some points. That Prairie View defense is going to be under an awful lot of pressure. We will see who comes back in at quarterback. The last time out, it was Jared Hayes who took his team on a very impressive drive to go out in front 7 nothing. He threw an eight-yard TD pass to Romello Shoemake. That's where we are right now. It's 7 nothing, and it will be Hayes coming back out with the football resting closer to the one-yard line. So it's going to be first and goal to go for the Tigers after the fumble on the kickoff return. So Jared Hayes so far 6 of 8 for 56 yards in this one. And we have a timeout on the play. Our referee Scott Johnson there giving the indication. And so, Lima, when you talk about right now where well, we have a chance, what does this do for momentum in a ball game when you make such a big mistake like that early in a ball game? Well, it takes the momentum and confidence away from Prairie View on the road. You, don't, you do not want to have any type of turnovers like that, especially giving it up on the two-yard line. Conversely, on the opposite side for Jackson State, it just builds their confidence because they come into this game with changing of the head coach and their offense want to kind of reestablish themselves under the new uh, leadership of Coach Hendricks. And right now they're all to a very impressive start led by their senior quarterback in Hayes. Now you see the referee, Scott Johnson, over there with the headsets on. They may be checking to see if it was indeed a fumble. But as we can see here, the ball appeared to be clearly out on the play and Jackson State did make the recovery. So... We're going to find out exactly what Scott is looking at there, and we'll see when he comes back. Uh, but right now, the ball is on the one-yard line, and that is where the Jackson State Tigers are hoping to take over. So it is a first and goal for Jackson State. Jared Hayes and company are going to operate first and goal from just outside the one-yard line. Number 17, Jordan Johnson, their leading Rusher on the season is in the backfield. They go with the big set. Hayes goes on the quarterback sneak, and he's not going to get there. The Prairie View defensive front rose to the occasion on that one, stuffing the attempt at a quarterback sneak. In fact, he may have lost a little bit. Yeah, good stop there from the right-hand side there. As you can see, my right, your left, you can see uh, Prairie View's Pushing back the offensive line of Jackson State right tackle, left tackle, excuse me, and stopping the quarterback. Number uh, 44, Nicholas Davis, the big tight end, was in the backfield on that one. This time they come back with two running backs, and the handoff goes to Johnson, and he can't get there. He is caught by number 59, Isaac Claiborne, and Claiborne just threw him away. So the first two to plays... The Tigers are rejected at the goal line. Excellent job there by Claiborne. The senior linebacker was able to stop the run and the momentum as his teammates came in and cleaned up. Johnson, you can see Preview's not giving up. Even though they gave up the turnover, they are not giving up any touchdowns right here in the last two plays. 
So you can see they've lost a little bit there. The ball's still resting a little bit outside the one as they come down on third and goal to go for Jared Hayes and the Tigers. The quick handoff to the fullback. And it appears he went over the line, and there's the signal from the official. It is a touchdown for Jackson State. So they go to the quick handoff, and they got the touchdown. A nice touchdown for the Tigers. It looked like number 48, Quentin Brown, was the guy up front taking it in for the score. Yeah, quick play there by Quentin Brown. Did to get the handoff from Hayes. As you can see, he sneaks in underneath the D tackle. Keep those legs moving as he gets into the end zone, and Jackson State earns their second touchdown here in the first quarter. Well, one of the big keys on the goal line is just always to keep that momentum moving forward. He had a good push from that offensive line. Like you said, he just ducked his head down and took it on in. Christian Jackman, the number one kicker in the SWAC, adds the extra point. And just like that, the Tigers are out in front. 14-0 early. Then to Kentucky, Tuesday on ESPN. Well, this was the scoring drive any coach would be happy to have. When you take a look at it, it was a one-yard scoring drive on three plays, and it took one minute and 17 seconds before Quentin Brown banged it in for the touchdown to put Jackson State out in front 14 to nothing. So Christian Mosley is back to return the kick again. He's the young man who fumbled the last one. This time he calls for the fair catch, so the Panthers will take over first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Yeah, smart decision there by the young man to be able to catch it first and foremost and, and kneel it in the end zone for the touch. I mean, excuse me, to be able to get it on the 20-yard line. Prairie View has to come out with a sense of urgency offensively. He only had one series thus far in the first quarter due to the turnover, but offensively, they got to get something going here on the road. You can see Jackson State has only allowed 191 points this season, and that ranks third in the SWAC. So that's what the Panthers are looking at as they try to make their comeback in this one. The pass goes out to Kalen Riles. He makes the catch, and here comes the flags right afterwards. So they may be tacking on to that one. And you can see the coaches from Jackson State are not happy about what happened on that play. No, not at all. It looks like it's a holding call against Prairie View, especially their wide receivers on that play. So the completed pass, but the Panthers are guilty of holding, as Scott Johnson indicates. So that will back them up, and that is not how they wanted to start this drive. But it was a good completion right there by Martin over to Riles, but it's all for naught. Another miscue for Prairie View offensively. You know, I talked about them having a sense of urgency here in this series. Then they put themselves in the hole with that penalty. So Jalen Martin, and, you know, we talked to his coach earlier this week, and he's described him as a very intelligent young man who really knows how to read defenses. This time he's looking downfield, and that's a misdirection there, a misconnection, and the pass is going to be intercepted right there by the Tigers and a big return as the Jackson State defense continues to impress. That's Ryan Thayer right there with the interception he's the 6'2 190 pound junior from new orleans but there stepped up and it was just a misconnection between the quarterback and the receiver yeah bad decision there by quarterback from morton throwing it a little bit too long to his receiver but nice interception there for jackson state another turnover another opportunity as they get the ball right within they left off the last yeah. time in the red zone as you can see their fans excited jackson state is red hot defensively and they're pumping up their offense here, giving them the ball back. Well, you know, this is incredible because the last two possessions for Jackson State have been inside the 10-yard line. I mean, this hardly ever happens. Great job by Ryan Thayer because he kept his eye on that football. He saw where it was going the whole time, and the receiver did not. This time the handoff goes to Brown again, and he just pushes his way forward, just pushing some extra yards there, getting down inside the five-yard line. And if you're the defense for Prairie View right now, you have to be a little fatigued. You've been, majority of your time has been on the field this, this first quarter, haven't had an opportunity to kind of take a break and relax. But, you know, it's sudden change in football, and you got to get back out there on the field and be productive right there defensively. You want to see if Prairie View is going to be able to withstand these, these turnovers because after a while, they're going to start to wear down, Butch. So Jared Hayes out for his third possession of the ball game and like I said two of the three have been inside the 10 yard line and now we're going to have a timeout on the field so Jared Hayes comes over to the sidelines to discuss things with his head coach John Hendrick and of course he's the interim head coach and we, we touched on it a little bit at the top of the show but 
it, it's a crucial thing for him because he's taken over. Now he has to get these team on his side, on his program. He wants to get this team. All of a sudden, someone else has been in charge. Now John Hendrick, the interim head coach, he was the defensive coordinator, and he told us this week he's in a different role now. Mm -hmm. Instead of him having to worry about just his own little world on defense, now he's got to worry about the whole team. Yeah, he went from running just a defensive unit to overall overseeing the whole organization and in the football program. And, and Coach Hendrick knows how to do that. He has that experience from an interim head coach uh, position before prior to him coming to Jackson State. But one thing he said that stood out to me on the conference call as well, Butch, is that he wanted to finish up what Coach Tony uh, Hughes started here at the program, finished up this, this season strong. That was very impressive to me because for a young man, I mean, for a coach to be able to step in somebody else's shoes, you would think they want to kind of control and take over and create their own new mindset. But he wanted to kind of finish up strong what Coach Hughes started. And you can see right here in this first quarter, they also have a red-hot start here offensively and defensively forcing turnovers. You know, that was very impressive when he said that because he said he and Coach Hughes are really good friends and he wanted to be a head coach, but not exactly yeah. like this. So here go the Tigers on the attack with a little semi-roll to the left side and passes complete right there to number 85. And that's a nice game down inside the goal line right there, inside the 5. 85 is Kylan Ritchie. Right. Making a nice catch. And Bush right now, Hayes is having success rolling the football to the outside when he comes to passing the football. And he's finding his big targets. And Richie, one of his tight ends, was able to get away from the defender, get the reception, and fall forth to the two-yard line. So the Tigers knocking on the door again. Jackson State trying to up their lead if they can. The hand goes to a handoff, goes to Quentin Brown, and he takes it right to the goal line. But he's going to be inches short of getting in. So now... The Tigers have a decision to make. Do you put points on the board? You have the number one kicker in the SWAC. Or are you so close, they're going to pull it back some. I see his knee must have been down, so they pulled it back to the one, and that may make the decision right there for Coach Hendrick. Yeah, it looks like Coach Hendrick is going with the kicking, kicking team, the number one kicker in the SWAC conference right now. They have momentum. They have a comfortable lead with 14 points. Adding three more points is only going to build their confidence and give their defense more hope this next series. So Christian Jackman is on to attempt what appears to be an 18-yard field goal, and it's up, and he splits the upright with it. So the Jackson State Tigers are able to tack on to their lead right now with 2.53 to go here in the first quarter. Jackson State finds themselves with a commanding 17-0 lead. And Butch is all Jackson State. They're winning on all three phases, offensively, defensively, as well as special teams. I talked about in the opening, Butch, you asked me what's, be, what's going to be the difference between these two teams. I said, whoever plays mistake-free football, and right now we're sending from Jackson State. Prairie View committed to two turnovers here in the first quarter, cost them 14 points, as well as field position. Prairie View has to find a way to kind of minimize those turnovers. If you're Coach Dooley right now, you got to get back to the basics. That, that means protecting the football. In this series, Prairie View has dominated. In fact, they've won the last four games over Jackson State. Last year, the Panthers won it 38-9. to But as you can see, the last Jackson State win was in 2016. They won that one 28-14. But so far today, with 2.53 to go, it's been an entirely different ball game in this series. It's been all Jackson State. Jackson State came out with a chip on their shoulder, new head coach, new opportunities. You can definitely tell here in the first quarter, excellent job there for their team coming out focused, understanding what was at hand, and they're attacking Prairie View early and often in this, in this first quarter. Christian Mosley is back to return the kick again as he waits from Adrian Salazar. And this time it's a deep kick, line drive type kick. It goes to Mosley, and he's not going to even try it. He's going to down it down, so the Panthers will once again start first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Lemont, how much of this could be a ball club playing for their new head coach. Sometimes when you have a change like that, mm -hmm. it's a difficult thing to have a change in the middle of the season. But sometimes it can be a positive thing because it can re-energize everybody. Absolutely. And you can definitely tell right now with Jackson State, it re-energized them, gave them more confidence. They came out with a defensive mindset because their, head, their new interim head coach is their still current defensive coordinator. And there's a handoff to Tucker, and he has no room at all as Tucker's going to be taken down right near the line of scrimmage. And that may change how many carries he gets in this ball game when you find yourself down by so much early in the game. Empty backfield this time for Morton. Fires it over, and do we do have whistles on the play, and there is another flag down, and the officials will sort this one out. All 
our referee, Scott Johnson, has a legal procedure against the Panthers. And once again, Lehman, early in this game, it's the penalties and the turnovers that are really hurting the Panthers. Yeah, Preview is shooting himself in the foot here on the road. Too many miscues, too many flags in this first quarter. They're putting themselves in the hole that it's hard for them to dig out going into the second quarter. Jalen Martin looking to pass again. Has some pressure, but he runs away from it. Tries to pick up as much as he could, but he's going to be upended right there as he's taken down. And nice job by that Jackson State defense. Good cover sack there for Jackson State. As you can see, the pressure coming from the top side. Morton couldn't find his receivers. Tried to get away from the defenders. Good group effort there. Group effort there for Jackson State to bring down Morton for a short game. That was Eric Bowie and Keontre Hampton coming up to make the stop. So, Martin's going to try to throw it again, but once again, he's forced out of the pocket. He loses the football. It's near the sidelines, and the ball goes out of bounds. So that was very near, nearly another turnover by the Panthers as the ball was just dropped by Morton. Too much pressure right now for Jackson, for the Prairie View Panthers offense. As you can see, the pressure is forcing Morton up in the, in the pocket. Look, just watch here. Watch the pressure come from the outside. Morton kind of goes through his survey, took off running, but stripped right there. Luckily, the ball bounces out of bounds, and Prairie View did not have another turnover. That was number 11, Tyler Rogers, coming up to strip that ball away from Jalen Morton right there. And as you said, luckily it went out of bounds. So the Tigers, will, the Panthers, will have to punt it again, and it's Zach Elder. And he gets a line drive kickoff, and it's going to be a Panthers' roll on the play as it's going to settle down right there. It's touched down by the PV Panthers and Jackson State. We'll get another attempt on offense. Unbelievable. I mean, we haven't even made it out the first quarter. I think Jackson State had the ball, what, four or five series so far in this first quarter with 17 points. I mean, it's, you, you can't even describe exactly how Jackson State is feeling right now offensively. They have so much confidence against Prairie View. Prairie View is really just killing their own momentum, killing their own hope here on the road. If you're Jackson State, you want to continue to put pressure on their defense, on Prairie View's defense, and force another way to try to get another touchdown here before the second quarter. And we're still early. 52 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And the J-State Tigers are back on offense again. Jared Hayes still in at quarterback number five. This time he passes it. Has a man. It is a completed pass. And he steps out of bounds. That is number one, Jordan Williams, wide receiver with a nice grab. And then he gets out of bounds. We call this an extended handoff as... Williams was able to get the ball early from his quarterback, Hayes, who got to make some moves on the outside. Good play call there to kind of slow down the tempo or continue this tempo for Jackson State offense. Tigers now operating on second down and very manageable situation here, second and short. Hayes is going to throw this time. Fires near the sideline, has a man wide open, and that is caught. Right there by number 23, Romello Shoemake. He's the young man who caught the touchdown early in the ballgame. This time he has a catch and a first down for the Tigers. So Shoemake, the junior out of Georgia, is finding the soft spot against the Prairie View's defense. The Prairie View corners are playing off the receivers for Jackson State, which plays right into the hands for Jackson State offense and their, off and their wide receivers because they're not even going that far down the field, Butch. They're going to stay right there by the line of scrimmage to be able to get the reception and make some moves on the outside. And once again, we have another timeout on the field as Hayes trots over to talk to his head coach. That is the end of the first quarter. And what a first quarter it was <laughs> for the Jackson State Tigers. As we go to break, Jackson State is up 17-0 over the Prairie View Panthers. Toot, toot. And welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. And so far, it's been all Jackson State. As you take a look at some of the stats from the first quarter, as you can see, Jackson State has kind of dominated this ballgame so far as Johnson spins away from a tackler, gets loose down the sidelines, and he might go all the way. Jordan Johnson is in for another Jackson State touchdown. And just like that, 
J-State has added to their lead with the first play of the second quarter. Unbelievable. I mean, coming in, you would think that Prairie View would play better defense in the second quarter, but watch Johnson spins away from the defender and watch this speed, Butch, as he runs down the sideline. No one can catch him. Nothing but opportunity in real estate. The second touchdown for Johnson, as well as the third touchdown for Jackson State here in the first half. Man, unbelievable for Jackson State in this first half in front of their home fans. Everyone's excited here at Veterans Stadium. That is one happy sidelines, but what a run by Jordan Johnson. And he showed a lot of that deceptive ability that he has because it looked like everybody was going to catch him. It looked like he was going to be tackled. And then the next thing you know, he's in the end zone. What a play by Jordan Johnson, a 59-yard touchdown run, and what a great run it was. Watch the spin move right there by Johnson. He was able to put his hand down and keep his balance. But all this is right here, just raw speed from Johnson as he separates himself from the defender and gets into the end zone for Jackson State football. Unbelievable job there for their offense on the first play of the second quarter. Jordan Johnson there on the sidelines. He's been their top running back all season long. He's six foot, but he goes about 200 pounds, so he brings a little pop to him. Of course, he's from Terry, Mississippi, but what a run that was. He did a great job spinning away from the loss and then getting down the sidelines, and just like that, Jackson State has a 24-0 lead over the visiting Panthers. And it's hard for Prairie View to kind of refocus after a play like that. You come into the second quarter, I'm, I'm pretty sure the defensive coordinator said, let's hit the reset button. This is a new quarter, new opportunity. But after that first play, giving up 51 yards, it just kills your confidence here in the second quarter defensively. Hopefully their offense can get some points here in this series. The scoring drive, three plays, 72 yards in one minute and four seconds. Man. <laughs> it is not taking them long at all to put points on the board. Adrian Salazar now back out to kick it away back to the Panthers as they try to generate some offense. This time it's going to be picked up right there by Christian Mosley, and he takes it, and he does not be still on his feet as he came out of that crowd. So the little man fighting hard, all 5'10 and 175 pounds. And now... We have a little mix-up on the field. You know, sometimes when you have turnovers going on, things can get a little heated, yeah. a little pushing and shoving going on. Things getting a little chippy here. You know, frustrations are starting to kick in for Prairie View on the road, down 24 points in the second quarter. Really haven't really brought their game plan or executed anything consistently on the road. If you're Jackson State, you want to keep a level head in front of your home fans and continue to dominate Prairie View before halftime. Yeah, the one thing that J-State doesn't want to do is to start making mistakes and getting a lot of silly penalties because that will stop the clock and give the Panthers, even though we have a lot of time to go in this ball game, it's 14:39 left in the second quarter. So Jalen Martin, this time, hands off inside to Dewanye Tucker. And I tell you what, he's been a marked man coming into this one. That defense from Jackson State, is, they have figured out where number one will be on every play. And it seems like Jackson State is doing a better job in their 3-4 defense maintaining and controlling Tucker as Prairie View is only one-dimensional right now in this first half. Martin fires a pass and has his man. That's number 18, Marcus Hardy, the big 6'2", 215-pound senior receiver. He's from Carrollton, Texas. A nice catch right there. He's had a good year so far. 20 catches on the year. That was number 21. And this time, a fake pass. He gives it to Tucker, who dances along the sidelines, and he's popped out of bounds, and then we have a flag on the sidelines, but there was also another flag in the field to play. He might go against Jackson State. Late hit on Tucker as he stepped out of bounds, and it looks like to me, I can't really see the number, but it looks like to me, Prairie View changes their quarterback as well, Butch. Went with number 14 here in the series. Trazon Connolly was in that time, and they're trying to do anything yeah. to jumpstart that <laughs> offense right now. Trazon Connolly comes in. He's a 6'2", 185-pound freshman. So the freshman from Duncanville, number 14, getting his action. As you see, the penalty did go against the Panthers, and the late hit. Late hit is against the Tigers. So they'll replay the down. So how about that? So early in the second quarter, Coach Dooley is not messing around. He's going to the freshman quarterback to try to jumpstart that offense. He has no other choice. I mean, right now on the road down 24 points, you know, you want to give credit. I mean, you want to give Morton more opportunities and, and help his confidence here on the road. But, you know, this game is about what have you done lately, and he hasn't done anything. Right now they go on with the freshman. 
Connolly looking to pass. Has Hardy. Hardy has some room over there, and he just about broke that one for a big gain. Marcus Hardy on the catch, and he's hauled down. And once again, the Panthers are trying to get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Panthers going back to the up-tempo style right now. It's a sense of urgency here with this series. Hopefully it can continue to have some consecutive plays in this drive. And that's Trazon Connolly again with another completed pass. It's going to be close to the first down for the Panthers because that's going to be the first thing they want to do is get a sustained drive and keep it going. Number 81, Jose Madrano with the catch there for the Panthers. Panthers. And what we're seeing right now from Prayer View is they're taking advantage of the outside edge as far as throwing the football. They want to build the confidence of their freshman quarterback. A flag was on the play, which helps Prayer View against Jackson State, which helps Prayer View move the football down. Looks like it's down to the 38-yard line. This freshman here needs to build his confidence against a very aggressive Tiger defense. Connolly looking to throw again. This time he pulls it down, and he has nowhere to go. Number 10 is Malik Hamner. We talked about him in the open. The big fellow was there quickly to make the stop. All 6'4 and 240 pounds of him. He is a senior from Tuscaloosa. So the Panthers are on the move. Connolly this time turns and he hands inside. The handoff goes to Caleb Broach and he picks up two or three yards inside. Back to back consistent up tempo style plays for Prairie View. They want to kind of catch Jackson State in substitute mode or off guard, if you're Prairie View, you like what you're seeing here offensively. You're finally getting something going here under your new freshman quarterback in Connolly. Connolly looking to the sidelines to get the next play. Panthers have their first sustained drive of the ball game going. This time he's going to throw it down the sidelines. And that's, well, there's a whole lot of blue shirts around that one. That was a dangerous pass there. And, you know, it looks like there was a couple of receivers right there in the same spot. And that's usually not a good thing. Not at all, and it seems like two players are at the same spot. Conley, you can see in this replay here, surveys the field, let it go real quick as two receivers in the same spot. One stop, one is coming on the post route. Miss opportunity for Prairie View offense. It looks like he was trying to go to Hardy, number 18, with the ball, but you really couldn't tell because there was another receiver who, had, like you said, hooked up short, and he jumped to try to make the catch. So Connolly this time under pressure. Lofts it high and deep, and he overthrows Hardy. So right now the Panthers are working on the cornerback on the left side of the field as Hardy tried to go deep. And that's C.J. CJ Holmes, you know, man-to-man -man coverage from the sophomore from New Orleans. Holmes is doing a phenomenal job on the back side as they preview try to pick on him in the man-to-man -man coverage. Good, there, good job there by Holmes to be able to take away the receiver, forcing the three and out putting Prairie View defense right back on the field against a very impressive Jackson State offense. So Jackson State coming back out. We see the Tigers in their blue and white uniforms today. That was a fourth down play, and they did not connect. So the, the PV Panthers tried to convert on fourth down. They did not do it. So the Tigers will take over. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. Handoff goes to Johnson, who's looking to throw it. He goes down the field, and his pass is going to be intercepted by the Panthers. So a little razzle-dazzle work right there coming up from the Tigers, but it did not work out that time. On the play, number 26, Ju Anthony Parker makes his third interception of the year. And Johnson's forced the ball down the field as he throws it in the halfback pass. Good job there for Prairie View. We talked about them catching some breaks here in the second quarter in order for them to get back into this game. There he is. There's the first break there for Prairie View. First turn of INT. The defense came up big on the field that time against Jackson State. Drew Anthony Parker, a 5'11", 165-pound junior from Dallas, picked up his third interception of the year. So the Panthers come back. They go right back to the ground game. And again, not much happening there as that front four from Jackson State plugged the hole again. And that was one of the things Coach Hendricks, he told us, Hendricks said, my front four, we don't give up a lot of yardage inside. Not at all. The last couple of games, they've been phenomenal there, shutting down the inside run. As you can see, Tucker trying to get something going. He's very elusive, but it's very hard to go against Hammond and company up front. They do a phenomenal job in that 3-4 defensive front. So that was another penalty against Jackson State. So the Panthers got five on the play. Here comes Connolly on the zone read. He keeps. Connolly just about broke that one all the way. He had two guys to beat. He tried to split the two defenders, and he just got tripped up. But a good decision 
by the freshman quarterback. Great job there by Conley by selling the fake. As you can see, he pumps fake there, but decides to keep the football. Breaks, gets away from two defenders, leans forward for a first down. But we also saw a flag on that play. We saw a flag, and there it is, and it's going to back, we'll back the Panthers up again. But what a great hustle play that time by number 10, Malik Hamner. You know, he's the big defensive lineman we talk about, talked about, the outstanding defensive, defensive lineman. He did not quit on the play. He was all the way downfield, and he helped to make that tackle. And he shows his leadership ability. We talked about the senior being the true leader on that three-form front. Hamner is outstanding. He never gives, up on, never gives up on the play. His motor is always running as he ran down the field and made that tackle against Conley as he broke away from the line of scrimmage. So the officials are having another discussion down on the field before they set the football. Scott Johnson is our referee today. As they try to sort things out. Prairie View in the white uniforms today, the road white uniforms. And we've seen, we, you know, now we're starting to see uh, a, look, a few more penalties in this ball game. Mm -hmm. Early on, you know, we were moving pretty quick. Both teams were getting on and off the football, but now things have kind of slowed down a bit. So they talk it over. The Panthers are still at the line of scrimmage. They are ready to go. They're waiting for the word, and they may be trying to find out exactly where they need to spot the football. First and one. You saw big number 99, Leroy Roddy, right there talking to the officials. The big fella say, "Let's can we get this underway here? <laughs> you know? You're a big lineman. You don't like to waste too much time. You want to get up there, get three and out, and get back to the sideline. This is a good time, though, for Connolly to go to the sideline. He's a young freshman quarterback being put in this situation. I'm sure he didn't expect to be in this ball game this early, but he is. And you see Coach Dooley and company over there trying to calm him down and make sure he, you know, has the right instructions. And so far he's doing okay. I mean, he's not doing as bad as Morton was doing in the first quarter. But so far the freshman quarterback in Conley has stepped up and has managed this game pretty well. Moving the prayer view offense down the field, sustaining drives is what Coach Dooley wants to see out of his freshman quarterback. And, and if you're Dooley... You know, you got to put him in the best position. I'm talking about the freshman quarterback in Conley. Give him the opportunity to get the ball out of his hands quick and give it to his, his receivers. But also, you tell your freshman quarterback, if you don't see anything that you like, don't hesitate to run as well. But he's done an excellent job so far here in the second quarter, taking the football, taking it down, and be able to run the football down the field and help his offense stay alive. Yeah, so far the Prairie View offense has been non-existent. Jalen Morton, when he was in there, two for five for only 12 yards and the one INT. Trazon Connolly has come on. He's two for two for just 10 yards. And in the running department, Martin is the leading rusher, four carries for 20 yards in this one. So the quarterback was the leading rusher for the Panthers. And the officials continue to meet and greet on the football field and we have a, a little delay in the ball game and you look at the Jackson State stats their leading rusher Jordan Johnson is out doing it again six carries for 72 yards and a touchdown of course he had the one 59 yard carry that was very impressive So now Prairie View uses the opportunity during the break. They sent a different alignment out, and they have a different formation. So the Tigers will have to adjust. Connolly puts a receiver in motion. Hands to Tucker. He tries to bounce it to the outside, and a lot of room out there for Tucker, his biggest run of the ball game so far. I talked about his lateral movement as well as lateral vision as Tucker was able to the junior out of Terrell, Texas, watch him bounce it back to the right side there, get away from the defenders, very elusive running back, excellent job there for Tucker to be able to pick up the first down and run out of bounds. So we have another illegal procedure penalty against the Panthers. So every time they start moving in one direction, they shoot themselves in the yeah, foot. Yeah, exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth, but they're shooting themselves in the foot consistently here in the first half. And if you're Coach Dooley, you're probably pulling your hair out on the sideline because 
the Panthers can't get anything going offensively or have any type of success moving the football. Connolly hands it again to Tucker, and he is caught in the backfield. Charles Anderson is there. He stops him quickly. A lot of Tigers in the backfield as Charles Anderson made a big stop. So that will really kind of stymie your momentum and kill some of that momentum Perry View had on this drive. Connolly looking to throw under pressure, and he's going to be wrapped up and thrown down. Keontre Hampton, the big 6'1", 225-pound freshman from West Point, Mississippi, is in the backfield quickly. Excellent job there by the freshman. Better come in from the backside there as he pulls down Connolly for the sack. So the Panthers come in, and Zach Elder, let's see. No, this is Connolly again with a pass underneath. It's complete to Jeff Rector, and a nice job by Rector as he picks up, moves the ball forward, and trying to get the, tie, the Panthers close to the first down. So Jeff Rector is his first catch. He's 5'10", 170 pounds. He's a junior from Houston, actually attended Westfield High School. So a young man who's had a fine season so far. Connolly again. This time he tries to pull it down and run, but he doesn't have too far to go. He's caught quickly. A nice job again by the Tigers' defense. Number 92, that is Justin Ragin, right there to make the stop. Jackson State comes with the pressure as well as on the backside. You see Ragin rips the football out. Did they call it a time? Did it? Was that third down? It looks like it was third down, fourth down, which turnover on downs, which gives the ball back to Jackson State. The Panthers were trying to make something happen again. They were going for it on fourth down and came up short. As a fine play right there by Ragin to knock the ball yeah. loose, but also to make a big tackle short of the first down. So the Tigers go back on offense. Jared Hayes back. Passing. Has a man, a completed pass to Benji Parrish, and he's pushed out of bounds after a short game. Right now, if you're Jackson State offensively, you want to be very uh, patient. You don't want to force anything. As you control the game and the clock, as well as the scoreboard, you can just see right there, Hayes is still having that high confidence, playing with a high confidence level here in front of his home fans. He do not want to force any turnovers or throw in any I INTs before halftime. That Jackson State defense has been fantastic here in the first half, and it's really set the offense up with some great position. But as we speak, the Prairie View defense comes away with a nice play. That's number 90, Willie Green, one of the top Panthers there to make the stop, plugging that hold. He does a great job there. Good job there for Prairie View to stop Jackson State on that play. Now it's a huge third down for Jackson State offense. Coach, Hay I mean, quarterback Hayes has to make a decision right now in this third down. Do he find his receiver early, or does he take off with his legs and pick up the first down? The Tigers trying to keep this drive going and pad their lead, which is 24-0 here. The blitz is coming from the Panthers. Has a man open down the sidelines, and it's going to be incomplete. A fine defensive play over there by Drake Cheatham, who came over from his safety position and was able to knock the football away. You saw the pressure coming from the bottom side against Hayes. Hayes throws it to the top left, but good closing speed there by the safety for Prairie View to stop it, forcing the three and, three and out for Jackson State offense. Yeah, it appeared Hayes was trying to hit Warren Newman, who was also open, but as you could see on that replay, there was another receiver in front of Newman who was wide open. So the Panthers dodged a the bullet there because of a great defensive play by Drake Cheatham. So now Jackman is on to punt it. Gets one high. End over end kick. And the Tigers are going to get a nice roll before the Panthers fall on it at about the 13. Ju Anthony Parker is the guy who downed the football. We will pause for another timeout right now with the Tigers leading the Panthers 24-0 here in the second quarter. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. We are back in Jackson, Mississippi, and the Jackson State Tigers find themselves with a commanding 24-0 lead over Prairie View A&M. We mentioned coming into this ballgame that Prairie View had won the last four games in this series, so I don't think anybody expected this kind of start early to this ballgame. 
unless you're Jackson State head coach, interim head coach, Coach Hammer, he came in with a totally different mindset, with a new opportunity to prove himself as well as his program. And you've got to be impressed what you see out of Jackson State thus far in this first half. That was Tucker on the carry up the middle. Advancing the ball, a nice gain, bringing up a manageable second down for the Prairie View Panthers. Freshman quarterback Trazon Connolly still in the ball game. This time he hands again to Tucker. He's going to be spun down this time after a very short gain. That's going to set up a third and short for the Panthers. And once again, they have been trying to go to that up-tempo offense, but to this point have not really had a lot of success with it. Not at all, especially on the road. T too many turnovers, too many flags. Penalties has really hurt Prairie View offense and their consistent drive throughout this first half, or non-existent uh, consistent drive in this first half on the road. Connolly back in the pocket. He's going to be caught and knocked down in the backfield. Keontre Hampton, the 6'1", 225-pound freshman, is in the backfield to make a great stop. Another great play there by the freshman in Hampton. As you can see here, blitz throughout the middle, un come unblocked as he brings down Connolly. For, for a tackle for loss in the backfield. And right now, it doesn't really matter who's in that quarterback because they're <laughs> getting so much pressure on, it's really tough to operate. So here comes Zach Elder again, and this is the first time the Panthers are punt in a while because the last two drives, they've gone for it on fourth down and did not convert. So Zach Elder on the kick it away, and he hits a beauty. It's a high driving kick. And it takes the Tigers all the way back in deep into their territory before Warren Newman made the fair catch for Jackson State. Jackson State got to love what their defense is given. It's done so far in this first half. Consistent, consecutive stops against Prairie View offense, killing their confidence. But on the other side of the field, their offense, Jackson State offense, is playing with high confidence right now with 24 points in the first half. Coach has to like what he's seen out his quarterback in, in, in Hayes. Hayes has been a great manager as well as moving the football down the field, finding receivers, and scoring points. Hayes early in the ball game, 9 of 11 for 76 yards and a touchdown pass, so quite impressive there. And then Johnson has been the big guy carrying the football. There he goes again. That was his seventh carry, seven carries for 73 yards. So he came in as the leading running back for the Tigers, and, and we've, he's been very impressive so far. Oh, he's been, he's been outstanding in his first half. I mean, he had that one play, and he took it all the way down to the, to the end zone, the 51-yard rush. You know, Johnson has been phenomenal. His deceptive speed has been impressive as well, getting away from the defenders and blasting his way into the end zone for Jackson State offense. Second down for Jared Hayes and the Tigers. Hayes will pass, or try to pass, but he's taken down instead. A nice pass rush by the Panthers, and they came away with the sack. Jason Dumas, the six foot one, 196 pound freshman from St. James, Louisiana, is in the backfield for the sack. Dumas did a great job on the top side of the field, beating the, the left tackle and earning that sack. If you're Prairie View, defensively, that's what you need to see here in the second quarter, and hopefully that can carry on in the second half. So Hayes now looking at a different type situation, and they got him again in the backfield. This time it's Jermaine Jackson in the backfield. He's 6'1", 280-pounder, and boy, did he get in that backfield quickly for somebody that big. Give credit to everybody up front on that last play there. Doom is as well as his, his teammates because they brought enough pressure to force Hayes up for consecutive back-to-back -back sacks, that's what you need to see from Prairie View here defensively in this second quarter as they try to make a comeback in this game. Jermaine Jackson, number 94 on the sack, and somebody just hit the wake-up call because just like that, <laughs> all of a sudden that Prairie View defense is making their presence felt in the ball game. So Jackman on to punt it. Some pressure, and it may have been partially blocked. I think someone got a hand on it for the Panthers, so... Jackson State, Jackman was punting, and the Panthers are going to have great field position after that one, but I do think that punt was partially blocked. And let's see what that confidence defensively helps. How can it help the Prairie View offense right now? Because they're very, I mean, they're struggling regardless of who playing quarterback. They come in with the freshman quarterback again with Connolly, 
maybe that defensive spark can kind of help this offense get going here in the second quarter. And we have a timeout on the field. And sometimes it works like that. Sometimes you have the spark lit on defense, and that's what's happening for the Panthers. They get back-to-back -back sacks, but Jay State is still out in front, 24-0. 24-0 here in the second quarter. Uh, we're going to keep it here, and we pick up the Panthers on the attack. Connolly under some heat. He throws it high, but it is caught by Zarian Holcomb. A nice catch there by number seven for a short game. Holcomb is a very big receiver and good target there for the freshman quarterback in Connolly. Connolly's going to try to go to him very often in the second quarter. So the Panthers have had one really good drive so far in the game. Connolly this time with a perfect pocket, and his receiver fell down near the sidelines. He had an open receiver. That was Marcus Hardy, but he lost his footing and goes down, and it's an incomplete pass. So the Panthers coming up quickly, and we have movement up front, and flags are down. So we will see whether or not Jay State jumps off sides or whether or not the Panthers moved. And if you're Prairie right now, you can't afford any more penalties or flags throughout this first half. They had enough share. They had their fair share in the first half, which eventually killed their momentum offensively. For Coach Dooley, you can't continue to have flags against your offense. Well, Scott Johnson and his crew has had a lot to talk about here in the second quarter. So you just talked about it. It's going to be illegal procedure against the Panthers. So they will back them up five after the penalty. You back them up five, and it's still third down. I mean, you, you're just really now playing in the hands of Jackson State defense as they move their cornerbacks a little bit back because now they know Prairie is definitely throwing the football. So Panthers started in great position. We'll try to capitalize. Connolly's pass is batted down. So once again, the pressure from the blue up front was in the backfield and in Connolly's face. Give credit to everyone up front. As you can see, the gains up front, the D tackle and the, and the tight end, I mean, the defense end moving around, confusing the freshman quarterback and Connolly. Someone got their hand up, knocked the football down. Another three and out for Prairie View offense. So back to receive the punt for the Tigers is going to be Warren Newman. Zach Elder is out to punt it away for a Prairie View. And it's a fake. And the Panthers are trying to pick up a first down. And a big play on the fake punt right there by Prairie View a &M. And it's number 48 on the carry, Jalen Wooten, the linebacker from Dallas, who comes up with the fake punt. Huge break there for Prairie View as Wooten picks up the first down and give life back to the offense for Prairie View. Coach Dooley had to dial up something because if he punted the football right there before halftime, he would have killed all kind of hope for his team in his first half. So Connolly turns and gives to Tucker, and he is caught again. Once again, that big blue front, they're keeping a very close eye on number one, DeWanye Tucker, and he's having a tough time getting going in this ball game. Man, Coach Hendrick talked about it this week, how their inside uh, running game, I mean, how their inside play has shut down any type of runs, and we've seen that consistently through the first half. Boy, that was a very dangerous pass as... Connolly tried to come back and throw to the near side, and there were a lot of blue shirts there, and that one was almost intercepted. Looked like it was number seven. Bowie got his hands on it right there as he tried to turn around and bring it into his body and drops the football. Fine play by Eric Bowie. Number seven was right there with a couple of his friends, so now a big third down coming up for the Panthers, but not before we have whistles on the field, and another flag is down, so I, you know, I don't think Prairie View travel very well on this game. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Sometimes it just takes a while to get in sync, and that's what's happening today.
Scott Johnson, our referee, making the call, and a lot of the Panthers are motioning to the sidelines. like they're having trouble getting the play in from the sidelines Connolly and it could have something to do with the fact that Connolly is a freshman this time the pocket just breaks down in a hurry but the pass is complete to Hardy and he is upended near the sideline Hardy is flipped up and over by Marco Gladney Marco Gladney with a big hit for the Tigers you're glad the sophomore comes in and cleans up the receiver Good catch there by Prairie View. Wide receiver to try to pick up a first down, but I see Gladly comes in, takes his legs from underneath him, forcing fourth down. Once again, though, a lot of pressure in the backfield on Connolly. This time he dumps it off quickly. And Jeff Rector is spun down. Now Rector is running downfield. He says he did not touch, but the official is blowing the whistle, and they are marking the football down. Excellent one-on-one -on -one tackle there by Summers. As you can see, Conley goes out to the outside. But watch the closing speed and good one-on-one -on -one tackle there by the cornerback, bringing down the receiver. Turnover downs for Prairie View offense. Give the ball back to Jackson State. Well, and you could see Coach Dooley really wanting to make something happen on that possession because they started with such good field position, and then they run the fake punt, and they got the first down, and now they don't convert on fourth down. So the ball will flip back over to Jackson State. With 2.19 to go here in the first quarter. And the handoff goes inside to Johnson, and he has no place to go. And we have a timeout for the officials now down on the field. We have an injured player, and it appears to be Johnson. And that would be a huge loss for the Tigers number 17 Jordan Johnson appears to be the injured Tiger down on the ground yeah that will be a huge loss especially going into the second half Johnson has been outstanding for Jackson State throughout this first half breaking tackles as well as taking the ball down the sideline for a touchdown for 51 yards hopefully the young man gets up after this timeout break yeah Jordan Johnson we talked about how he had been their leading rusher Leading rusher, and he has a 59-yard touchdown in this one. But right now, he's down on the field. We'll be back after this timeout. 24-0, Jackson State. There and host your heart out. Maytag will see you on the other side. Maytag, what's inside matters. And we are back in Jackson, Mississippi, where Jackson State has the football. Hayes fires a pass under pressure, has a man near the sidelines, and the official will say he did get a foot down in bounds. That is Kobe Gates making the catch near the sidelines. You know, Coach Hendricks said Kobe Gates is as tough as a $2 steak. <laughs> Boy, he showed some of his toughness there on the sidelines, getting a foot down inbounds. And it also shows consistently how Jackson State has continued to move the ball down the field. Hayes take a big shot there, but good job there by the receiver to get the reception and keep his feet in bounds for the first down. So Jackson State comes out, picks up a first down on a big play. This time we have a flag down as Quentin Brown pounds his way off tackle to pick up a couple of yards but uh, we have another flag down and right away it's going and according to Scott Johnson it is a chop block against the Tigers offense so that will back them up yeah first mistake there for Jackson State in the second quarter from a penalty standpoint chop blocking is not acceptable against any defensive player that really hurts Jackson State offense well the clock is continuing to run too while they're marking off the penalty 
And now we're down to like 138 to go here in the first half. Hayes backing up and backing up, and finally he just dumps it up inside, and I'm not sure there was an eligible receiver there. Number 85, Kylan Ritchie, was in the vicinity, but I think there is a flag down. It may be illegally grounding the football. You're right, Butch. There's no illegal, I mean, no eligible receiver or running back in the vicinity of that football was drew the flag. Give credit to Prairie View again. Continue to bring that pressure up front to kind of disrupt Hayes' chemistry with his receivers and his running back. Scott Johnson and his crew trying to make sure they get the call right out on the field. Number 85 was there just a matter of whether or not he was close enough. Where he threw the football, there were just two linemen there. But number 85, uh, Richie, Kylan Richie was definitely in the vicinity. Now, whether or not they think he was close enough, I think that may be what the discussion is. So the flag for the illegal grounding was picked up, but the Tigers were guilty of unsportsmanlike conduct. And that's going to be the big play. And number 85, Richie, will be ejected from the ball game as you see Kylan Richie being escorted back to the locker room. So for the unsportsmanlike conduct, he was ejected from the ball game. And for Jackson State, they've been playing perfect football throughout this first half. It seems like under less than two minutes to go here in the second quarter, things are starting to fall apart for them offensively as a player is ejected from the game as well as a couple penalties if you coach Hendrick you want to kind of get things back together and hopefully regroup at halftime and come out with that explosive offense like you saw throughout this first half well and there's another penalty on the play so you can back up the Jackson State Tigers five more yards and now what was great field position now they're in the shadow of their own end zone Now, while we were away on that last commercial break, they did help Jordan Johnson off to the sidelines, but he did not go off on his own power. He was helped off on the field, so we hope he is okay, and when we get an update on that, we will definitely pass it along to you. But he was helped to the sidelines, but he did try to go off on his own power. So now there's a timeout on the field by the Prairie View Panthers, so they want to talk it out. There's a minute and 20 seconds to go in the first half. They're talking about what happens when we get the ball back because after the penalties, if they do get it back, they will have great field position. And hopefully Prairie View can put at least three points on the scoreboard before halftime to give them some kind of hope in the second half. Now, if you're Coach Hendricks, you know, you got to find a way to kind of Settle your guys down as things came, you know, they got out of hand on that last series as far as a player getting thrown out as well as a couple penalties. You got to get back to the basics and find a way to continue to run the football. Even though Johnson is out, they got to find a guy to substitute Johnson because whoever it is, they're going to need him in the second half, Butch. This offense has been so explosive this year. They've had three 200-yard rushing performances. Two by Tucker. We talked about that, that on the top. The other one, which was a school record set by the quarterback. Morton, 255 yards. So the Tigers now, with the football, trying to keep it on the ground and run some of that clock, but he has no place to go. Anthony Stubbs is in the backfield quickly and just rode him down with a big stop. Yeah, Stubbs steps in for Johnson. Johnson left the game with the injury. And he has some huge shoes to fill right here in the second quarter. And most likely he's going to be the guy toting the football in the second half for the Tigers. And we have another stoppage in play on the field with 104 left to go in the first, 114 left to go in the first half. And they're trying to salvage as much time as they can to try to, like you said, to get something on the board before we get to halftime. What a nice day for football, as you can see, in Jackson, Mississippi. Great day for some football in Jackson, Mississippi. The fans, home fans, is excited what they're seeing in the new Jackson State football program under Coach Hendricks now, the interim head coach. You know, the band is getting set to play at halftime. It's a lot of potential, a lot of expectation, a lot of 
excitement in the in the atmosphere now in Jackson State. You know, you talk about these two programs, and we're going to talk about it a little bit as the broadcast go on, goes on, but great players on both sides. You know, I was just thinking about it. You look at some of the Jackson, Jackson State guys. As we come up and pick up the action here, they're going to try to punt out of their own end zone. Christian Jackman is on to punt it away. Gets it up high and a booming kick from Jackman. Fair catch is called for and made at about the 38-yard line by Jew Anthony Parker. So that is exactly why the Panthers were stopping the clock. They were, knew they would get good field position and a last-ditch effort to try to get some points on the board before we get to halftime. 107 left to go here in the first half. If you're Coach Dooley, you're putting a lot of pressure and a lot of responsibility in your freshman quarterback and Conley right before halftime with less than a minute. What a minute and seven seconds to go here in this first half. Can Conley produce any points from Prairie View and get them on the scoreboard? Connolly near the sidelines has a man. It's a completed pass to Hardy. And since Connolly has come in, Hardy has been the number one target. Good catch over near the sidelines, and the Panthers are hurrying to the line. We're down under a minute to go here in the first half. Good fake by Connolly on the zone read. But he has nowhere to go because Darius Woods is there quickly to make the stop for the Titans. Conley decides to keep the football, as you can see in this replay here. Sells to fake, decides to keep the freshman. Tried to get to the outside, but was brought down by the linebacker. Connolly looking for the end zone, has a man. And Hardy almost had a nice catch there for the touchdown, but he could not hang on. He did a good job of coming over the top. Conley goes to his favorite target here in the second quarter. That's Hardy. Hardy got both hands on it. Unfortunately, did not come down with the football. Another missed opportunity there for Prairie View offense. You know, Hardy's a big guy, 6'2", 215 pounds. And Connolly did the right thing, put it up, and he let him go up and get it. But Hardy, Marcus Hardy, just could not hang on. So third down, Connolly this time floats it, and he has a man. And that was Zarian Holcomb. And here comes the flag. And the Tigers will be guilty of pass interference on the play. He did have Holcomb, and Holcomb had a chance to make the catch. Conley goes again back to the end zone. He goes to his other target in Holcomb. As you see, the late flag comes in from the backside. That's going to be pass interference against Jackson State. Kevin Berthy, number 12, is the guilty party for the Tigers. He's a 6'1", 191-pound sophomore from New Orleans. And that's going to set Prairie View up with great, great field position knocking on the door with only 27 seconds to go here in the first half. So that would be a huge lift for the Panthers if they could push this one in. Right now our score is 24-0. Jackson State out in front, but Prairie View knocking at the door with 27 seconds to go here in the half. Connolly on the roll right, has a man open, completes his pass to Holcomb, but he has cut down near the five-yard line. A nice stop by that Jacksonville defense, and we have a timeout on the field now with 16 seconds to go. You can see Kylie rolls out to the right-hand side, has success here early in the second quarter doing that, gives it to Holcomb. Good closing speed there by the cornerback to bring down Holcomb at 6'6". You want to take away his legs and don't allow him to get any momentum to find a way into the end zone. Yeah, it looked like for just a second he might have some running room, but Marco Gladney, he got up there quickly and made a big hit, and then once he made the hit, that was it. So the Panthers have the ball resting near the goal line, and then we mentioned it would be a huge lift for Coach Eric Dooley's team if they could get into the locker room with a touchdown. And on the, on the flip side, the first true test for Jackson State defense here late in the second quarter, can they bend but not break? and not give up any touchdown or any points before halftime. If you're Jackson State defense, you want to continue to shut down the running game in the inside, forcing the freshman to throw the ball a little bit too early and incomplete passes against his receivers. Okay, we have 16 seconds to go here in the first half. Connolly looking to fire in the end zone, and it is caught. And no, it's incomplete. The pass was tipped up, and it was almost caught in the end zone. It looked like 85. Kalen Riles had an excellent shot at it right in the end zone. Very dangerous pass there for the freshman quarterback to go in the inside on the quick slant to his receiver with three defenders wrapped around him. 
incomplete opportunity there for Purdue. Kalen Riles almost made a great catch. We have four seconds to go here in the first half. And we have Scott Johnson on the sidelines, and as they put the ball in play, it looks like the Panthers are going to go for it. No, they're putting time back on the clock. Apparently, they let a little bit leak off the clock, so they go back from four seconds. They added six seconds to the clock, so we now have ten seconds to go in the first half. And if you're a prayer, you want to go for the end zone real quick, and if you don't get it, you can rely on the field goal for fourth down. Connolly lofts it high into the corner, has a man, and it's a touchdown to Marcus Hardy. The big 6-2 wide receiver, and that time he put it up high, and the Panthers are on the scoreboard here in the first half. Yeah, finally for Prairie View, they find a way to get into the end zone. It goes from the freshman to his favorite target here in the second quarter. That's Hardy. Hardy bends over and bows to his freshman quarterback as he thanks him for getting that touchdown and giving Prairie View some points on the road. Yeah, Hardy was wide open right there, just a yard into the end zone, and it's kind of hard to believe you can be that wide open <laughs> down in a goal line situation but there he was so that will bring on Zach Elder to add the extra point we are down to six seconds to go here in the first half and Elder will try to make it yes he does and just like that the Jacksonville State Tigers have had their lead cut it is now Jackson State 24 and Prairie View 7 and if you're Coach Dooley right now, you have some hope between the chemistry between the freshman and Dooley and his receiver Hardy. As you can see in this replay here, I talked about Prairie View needs to go to the end zone real quick before the fourth down as the ball was lost up high for Hardy to get the football in the first touchdown for, the tech, for Prairie View on the road in Jackson, in Jackson State. Yeah, you know, just taking a look at that replay, it looked like the defender, Ryan Thayer, thought he was going to run to the flag mm -hmm. and he pulled up and the receiver when he tried to the defender when he tried to come back he slipped down and so now it's a touchdown so how much does that change this ball game now with Prairie View coming up with a touchdown right before the half it gives Prairie View hope and it gives them confidence going into the halftime they can make some adjustments which they will do coach Julie's going to coach up his guys at halftime but if you're Jackson State you know it showed that the mishaps offensively gave Prairie View some really good field position when they punt the football, and Prairie View took advantage with their freshman quarterback in Conley. Conley found his favorite target in Hardy for their touchdown. So this game is not over by a long shot, but it's going into the second half. You know Prairie View is going to come out very competitive against Jackson State. So the Panthers kick it deep. It's hauled in there by Newman, and he is going to be knocked down quickly, and that is the horn to signal the end of the first half. And what an impressive first half it was for the Jackson State Tigers as they head to the locker room. Jay State has a commanding 24-7 lead over the Prairie View Panthers. We'll be right back with the halftime show in just a minute. Feeling the flavor, the place. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. Welcome back to Jackson, Mississippi for the Toyota Halftime Show. I am Butch Alcindor along with Lemont Williams, and we had a whale of a first half as the Jackson State Tigers find themselves with a 24-7 lead over the Prairie View A&M Panthers. And Lemont, when they came into this game, we thought this team would be a contest of two evenly matched teams, but Jackson State, though, had other ideas. They also had a change this week. They had a new head coach, an interim head coach, and John Hendrick. How much do you think that played into the momentum in the first half? It was huge for them. I mean, it played a lot in the momentum for Jackson State. They came and fired up on all sides of the football, offensively, defensively, special teams, forcing turnovers. They put Prairie View in a tough environment in the first quarter, which helped them produce points and got them off to a fast start. you got to like what Coach Hendry did. He really revamped his team. You can definitely tell in the first half. Yeah, and, and they're playing with a lot more emotion in this ball game coming in. Maybe the biggest surprise to me, I don't know about you, but Jalen Morton. Yeah. To see him not being able to generate the offense that he has generated for Prairie View yeah. for most of the year. The first half, that J State defense did a really good job containing it. And they confused them up front. They brought a lot of pressure. You got to give credit to Coach Hendrick. They kind of disguised their blitz package, which forced Morton to kind of force the, the turnovers as well as the interceptions. 
And you know Coach Dooley couldn't have a lot of patience on the road for his quarterback to make those mistakes. They made so, those changes in the second quarter and forced Prairie View to kind of go with their freshman quarterback in Conley. And, of course, we can't talk about the first half without giving a lot of credit to that Jackson State defense. Those guys were outstanding in the first half. They turned the ball over, had possessions inside the five, two possessions off of turnovers in the first half. And they forced Prairie View to be one-dimensional. They shut down the running game. Anything inside was non-existing for Prairie View as far as running the football, which forced Prairie View to throw the football. Eventually, they had some success in the second quarter, late in the second quarter with that touchdown. But Prairie View was very one-dimensional throughout the first half. What was your impression of the freshman Connolly coming in at quarterback? And I know they did that just to change things up a little bit, but give me your impressions of that move. You know what? I really thought he did better than what Morton did in the first half. I mean, Connolly came in with some huge shoes to fill with Morton going out. I thought Coach Dooley did a better job as far as getting his freshman the opportunity to get the ball out of his hand early to the receivers on the outside edge. By doing that, it gave Conley more confidence in the second quarter as we saw him throw that touchdown to his favorite target in Harding. And I really want to see how that's going to produce in the second half for Prairie View on the road. Okay, one of the big factors in the first half, of course, Jordan Johnson, the leading rusher for the Tigers. He went out of the ball game with an injury. Of course, he had a big touchdown run, a 59-yard touchdown run. How important will that be in the second half if they cannot get that young man back in the lineup? It's going to be huge for Jackson State. Without their leading rusher and Johnson, he was their spark running down the field. You remember that 51-yard rushing touchdown that he broke down the sideline against Prairie View. Not having him in the second half is going to be very hard for Prairie View to, I mean, excuse me, for Jackson State to have that balanced attack against Prairie View defense. So if Coach Hendrick can't find a substitution for Johnson in the second half, anticipate Prairie View to continue to bring that pressure. As you remember, Butch, Prairie View was bringing pressure from the outside, sacking Hayes late in the second quarter. Now, the other big storyline surrounding that Jackson State offense, of course, dealt with the quarterbacks coming into this one. He told us it would be a game-dime decision. Yeah. He decided to go with Jared Hayes. Yeah. Jared Hayes had a very impressive first half. Did a good job of going from run to pass back to the run again. He did an excellent job managing the game. I mean, uh, the balance attack, like you said, Butch, running the football as well as passing the ball. And I really thought he did better as far as on third downs, being able to nail the ball, well, really complete the ball to his receivers when they needed him the most. And, and Hayes is doing a better job as far as managing the football. He's going to take that confidence that he had in the first half, transition that in the second half. With the lead that they have, all he has to do is continue to move the ball down the field and sustain the drives for the Jackson, Jackson State offense. Okay, I'm going to ask you to be fortune teller now. You're Coach Dooley. You're sitting in that locker room in Jackson, Mississippi. What are you telling your team right now before they come out for the second half? If I'm Coach Dooley right now, I'm telling let's hit the reset button. I mean, you had an opportunity to score a touchdown right before halftime, and this is a whole new second half if you're Prairie View. Prairie View needs to come out and get back to the bases and what makes them successful, and that's running the football. you got to give the ball to Tucker. Give the ball to your best running back. Again, you talked about him having over 200 rushing yards this season. He might not have 200 yards in the second half, but if he can continue to run the football and be able to give Prairie View some hope, you never know. What yeah, you know, I think that's a very crucial point because yeah. now that they got the points on the board right before the halftime, it changes things a little bit. Now you can mix in more of the run and the screen, and you can get Tucker back. Yeah, Tucker is huge for them. I mean, he's their spark. He's their heart and soul of their offense for Prairie View. If Prairie View wants to get back into this football game, it's going to start with running the football with Tucker, but also continue to build the confidence of the freshman quarterback in Conley. Yeah, and they've come out, and you could see also, you could see that Prairie View defense yeah. also picking up the pace a little bit. They had that one stretch in the second quarter where they had back-to-back -back sacks, and that was huge as far as motivating that team. Yeah, it's, it's pressure. It's, it's, it's always huge for the defense. If you continue to bring pressure against the Jackson State offense, that's going to help the confidence of the offense. Okay, let's pause for a quick timeout, but we'll be right back and show you some of that first-half action in the big game between Jackson State and Prairie View, the Tigers leading 24-7 at the half. Toyota, welcome back to the Toyota Halftime Show where the Jackson State Tigers are out in front 24-7 over Prairie View. We're looking at action from the first half here and a big interception by the Tigers and that would set up another score as the Jackson State Tigers force two turnovers here in the first half. But then you see Johnson right here trying to force the football down the field. Huge break there for Prairie View defense pick up their first 
turnover, INT on Drew the road. Anthony, Drew Anthony Parker coming up with that INT. And then check out Johnson. Jordan Johnson spinning away and then 59 yards down the sideline. Nothing but real estate and opportunity for Johnson as you see his feet running down the sideline for the touchdown. But that Prairie View defense came alive. They got back-to-back -back sacks. And then how about this? The fake punt. It goes to big Jalen Wood. Stated Butch with the seven penalties for 66 six yards. They got to minimize that in the second half. They want to continue to have this lead against Prairie View. We mentioned how Prairie View came into this game winners of the last four games in this series, and they won big last year. But uh, Jackson State really playing with a lot of emotion. So this series is a big series. But I also want to mention these two teams when they get together, they can produce a lot of talent. And the first thing you think about when you come to Jackson State, you think about Walter Payton, guys like Robert Brazil, Lim Barney, big Jackie Slater, Leon Gray. It goes on and on. Vernon Perry, who was the golf coach at Prairie View for a while. He may still be. And on the other side, for PV, you got guys like Kenny Houston. Otis Taylor, who won Super Bowl IV. He went to Worthing High School in Houston. Just a lot, a lot of talent. And that tradition goes on today. And also, what also jumps out with those names you named, there are Hall of Famers on that list as well. You talked about Walter Payton. You talked about Kenny Houston. Those guys are Hall of Famers as well as other guys from Jackson State that speaks volumes. So the SWAC Conference produced a lot of Hall of Famers in the NFL. So Prairie View trying to come up with that kickoff right there. We had a flag down early in the half, and that is Madrano right there at the bottom, number 81. And the officials will try to sort this thing out again as we get to work early here in the second half. And there is Scott Johnson, our referee with the call. And the Panthers are going to be off sides. But how about that? Trying to get the recovery early and steal a possession. Would have been a big play by the Panthers. Instead, they will have to re-kick a five-yard penalty for being offsides. And that's a tough play because I, I, I couldn't see when they were unstacking, but it looked like Prairie View had a really good chance to recover that football. Prairie View tried to take a chance there on the special teams, trying to catch Jackson State off guard. Looks like we're going to have another re-kick. So the Panthers were offsides, so they'll have to redo it again. Zach Elder back to kick it off, number 37. He hails from San Antonio, six foot tall, 175 pound sophomore. This time he kicks it deep. And the Tigers are going to bring it back. A good return by Newman. Splits a couple of tacklers there and then finally goes down around the 34 yard line. But Warren Newman doing a great job on the kickoff return to give the Tigers great field position to start the second half. And if you're the Jackson State Tigers, if you're a Jackson State Tiger fan, you want to see who comes out in the running back position. You remember Johnson goes down with the leg injury late or early in the second quarter. He was caught, he was helped off the field. It looks like Hayes is back in the game. Who's going to carry the load from running the football standpoint for Jackson State in the second half? So the gamble early on did not pay off by Prairie View, so the Tigers will find themselves with great field position. Hayes wanted to throw to his running back. Instead, goes out to the sidelines and has a completed pass to number six, which is Carl Ali, with a nice catch. His first reception of the ball game. Yeah, Ali, the sophomore out of Jackson, Mississippi, 6'3", 200 pounds, was able to get away from the defender on the sideline and pick up his first reception here in the second half. And we need to note that Quentin Brown is starting in the backfield in the second half, so no Jordan Johnson at this point for the Jackson State Tigers. This time, Hayes gives it to Brown, and he pounds his way, but he has not much happening right there. He's taken down by number 20, Anthony Stubbs. Maybe got a yard on the play. He just didn't need much for the first down, but he, he was stopped in a hurry. And if you're a Prairie View defense, this is what you need to step up in the second half on third down. Find a way to kind of get 
uh, uh, Jackson State, excuse me, is second down and eight. But when you're in third down situation, you got to be able to step up big and force a three and out against Jackson State. So Hayes has operated the entire game, and we have movement up front. Hayes is going to have one. He goes deep down the field, has a man over there. What an incredible catch by Rameek Wallace. Man. And it's going to be incomplete, but, boy, he got both hands on it and was trying to keep his feet in bounds. Just a really good effort. Looks like, Coach, I mean, it looks like Hayes want to take a shot down the field. One-on-one -on -one coverage there. Well, he saw the defense jump, and he knew he had a free play on the play, so he just took a shot. It was a no-lose situation, a heady play by Jared Hayes to spot that up front. He saw the Prairie View defensive lineman off sides, and he said, you know what, I'm going to take my <laughs> shot down the sideline. And it almost paid off big. It really did. So Hayes in control. This time has to flushed out of the pocket. Has a man near the sidelines. He got it. That's going to be a first down. And then take a look at Carl Lally as he high steps is down the sidelines for a nice gain on the play. Man, Butch, where's Alley been all game? The 6'3 sophomore is coming to the second half. Red hot, two receptions here in the second half. You see that Hayes is finding a way to get the ball to the 6'3 sophomore. As you can see, Hayes feel the pressure from the bottom side here. Gets away from the pressure, but finds the sophomore. And Ali, Ali with the stiff arm away from the defenders, picks up some more positive guards and runs out of bounds. Well, one of their big receivers, Terrell Kennedy, left the team this week. So it's, it's opened the door for a lot of other guys to step up. And we're seeing it happen today. We're seeing a lot of other guys getting in the mix, making big plays today on the offensive end for the Tigers. And they're doing a good job both of moving the football here and of running the clock in the second half. So Hayes, that quarterback, and Prairie View is offsides again on the play. But was there movement up front? All the J-State players are pointing to the Panthers. You know, as a former player, you know, sometimes when you travel, things aren't right. You know, you try yeah. to make everything like home, as, as much like home as you can. But sometimes you just can't do it. And it looks like Prairie View just looks like they're a little out of sync today. Yeah, it just felt like they never was able to get back to the basics after getting up to that sluggish start or a horrible start in the first half, giving up so many points. I mean, as the game kind of plays out, you want Prairie View to kind of get back to the basics. Right now, it just seems like they're still out of sync from the first half. Jared Hayes rolling left, had a man open. That was number 10, Rameek Wallace. Just led him a little too far to the outside, and it's an incomplete pass. A little cameo there. An incomplete pass for the Tigers. And, you know, the last thing that Prairie View was, you know, both teams had a different objective coming out of the locker room. Prairie View wanted a three and out, and they wanted to get the ball back, and Jackson State... Well, if they had to draw it out, this is what they would want. They would want to continue to move the football and maybe tack on to that lead. And also control the football, I mean, control the clock here in front of their home fans. Hayes has a man wide open, and he dropped it. Pass was low, went down to try to get it, but he could not hang on to the football. And that is number one was the intended receiver, Jordan Williams. As you can see, Hayes here drops back and surveys the field, passes behind his receiver, which forces the incomplete pass. Yeah, that's a guy. You don't want to miss that one. He had a guy wide open there. It would have been a first down and would have continued this drive. So Tigers now with a third down, and it looks like it's third and about five yards to go with 12.25 here in the third quarter. Hayes slips out of the pocket, trying to decide whether he's going to run. He lost it up high. It goes to Brown, but... That's a dangerous pass to throw right there. He puts it up there, makes it a jump ball for everybody. And Brown, Quentin Brown, makes the catch and gets it forward for yardage. Unorthodox play there by Hayes, but he finds some, a solution to the problem as he finds a sophomore in Brown. Brown's able to get the reception and pick up the first down, continue to move that clock as well as the chains for Jackson State here early in this third quarter. Yeah, Jackson State has come out of the locker room and they've done a Heck of, a heck of a job here on their first possession of the second half. 
Jared Hayes has been in control the whole day. Six foot, 190 pound senior out of central Louisiana. Hands it off to Brown, and it's a big hole, and he just drives his way inside the five yard line, going to be knocked down at about the four. Brown steps in some huge shoes replacing Johnson, but you can't tell as a sophomore runs tough in the inside against the linebackers in the defensive line, getting this team into the red zone and closer to the end zone. Yeah, Quentin Brown has stepped in here in the second half. Now number 22, Javon Brown, is also entering the backfield. So we'll have that Brown and Brown backfield we talked about. Number 22, Javon Brown, is from Barbers Hill High School. That's right down the street. Yeah. Hayes under center. We have movement this time, and it looks like the offense was in a little too quickly off the, off the start. So it'll stay second down, five-yard penalty against the Tigers. We'll back them up five with 11 minutes to go here in the third. And the clock continues to tick. And actually the first miscue right there for Jackson State offense here in the third quarter. I mean, if you're coach, if you're the head coach, you got to like the consistent movement of the offense. But that was the first flag against Jackson State. Hayes hands it off to Brown. And Javon Brown, Javon Brown is very close to the goal line. He's going to be stopped at about the one-yard line. 93, Stephen Scott, one of the defenders helping out on the play. Good hard run there by Brown on the sweep there, not giving up. Keep his feet moving as he runs over a couple of defenders, leaning forward. you got to like the effort out of the senior out of Texas there. Brown comes in with some fresh legs, much-needed fresh legs for the Jackson State offense. And we have a timeout on the field as Hayes comes over to talk it over with his coach. And, and you can tell just by their movement there, they're very fired up about this. You have a new coach. He's an interim coach. He could be the new head coach by the end of the year, but he's trying to prove himself. This team is trying to prove themselves to the new coach. Uh, and, absolutely. And it's paying off. Absolutely, Butch. Both both are interviewing <laughs> for the for a job right now. The team is trying to revamp themselves and, and prove to the athletic director and Ashley Robertson showing him that they're they want to change the program as well as the head coach, the interim head coach, and Coach Hendrick, he wants to continue to improve and show himself to the athletic director as well that he can take on this permanent job at the head coaching spot. And if I'm the athletic director and, and, and uh, Robertson, I got to be impressed what I'm seeing thus far from Jackson State. Coming out of halftime, moving the football down the field, you got to like the effort. We do have an injury on the field. It was Will Skinner. You can see the trainer is taking care of him, but the good news is he goes off to the sidelines on his own power. That is Will Skinner, a six foot, 190 pound senior. He attended Spring High School just outside of the Houston area. So. Uh, Springer is a good sign that he was able to go off on his own power. But this is a big down coming up here now for the Tigers from Jackson State. They lead it 24-7. And they're closing in on some more points. This time they hand to Juvon Brown. And as not much going, that Prairie View defense very tough inside on that play. And now we have a penalty flags flying as we have an altercation after the play. The whistle blew it dead and then... We have the altercation out on the field. Yeah, a late flag coming in against Jackson State. It looks like it was number 64 pulling guys out of the pile. That's a no-no here on the football field as they drew the flag. Good call, Lemont. That is exactly what it was. Big number 64 in there pulling guys off the pile. Charles Moffitt. That's a no-no. You know, they changed yeah. that rule, and the officials. So that is a huge call, and that's going to back the Jackson State Tigers way up because they were at the goal line knocking at the door for maybe another touchdown. Now the penalty yard is just going to push them way back. And Coach Hendrick takes a timeout. He wants to talk about it because you know what he wants to tell his guys. 
we have the lead. We are in control. Let's not mess this up, guys. Yeah, and he wants to get, you know, he wants to take things back and kind of calm guys down right now. You can see him coaching up his guys here in the huddle and, let, and reminding them and bringing everybody on the field that they're home. They want to play sound football, but also discipline football as well. He's always trying to coach up his guys. As you can see, the emotion in Coach Hendricks right now, coaching up his guys and telling let's finish up, let's get some points and get out the football field. Well, it's all about discipline at this point in the game because the last thing you want to do is get sloppy, make a lot of penalties, hurt yourself. You had potential scoring situation that you may have squandered. So the last thing you want to do is, is, is do, you know, you have the lead now, but Prairie View is one score away from making this a whale of a ball game. So it was a timeout used, and that's exactly what he used that timeout for. You know, you look at that offensive line from Jackson State, and all season long, they've been pretty outstanding. They've only given up 17 sacks the entire year. That's pretty good by a unit. That is excellent. So here come Hayes. He's been in control the entire game. Fires over to the sideline, has his man, and he gets it back near the five-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. Aaron Townsend over there for the Panthers. Pass was complete to number 25, completing to number 25, Warren Newman. Really like what I'm seeing out of Hayes as far as when he goes through his progressions. He's not hesitating at all. He's trying to find the open man, and he definitely did that on that last play, finding Newman a sophomore in New Orleans. For that reception you know Hayes is doing an outstanding job of just taking what the defense is giving him this is a huge down coming up here for the Tigers of course I mentioned that they have the top kicker in the swack in Christian Jackman I mean he has a long of 47 this year but he's is now 12 of 14 on field goal attempts after adding one in the first half. And right now, Jackson State has controlled this whole third quarter thus far as they caught Prairie View for a free play. Prairie View offsides again, the pass into the end zone. Tried to hit Rameek Wallace. It's incomplete, but it appeared Anthony Stubbs jumped offsides for the Panthers, so that penalty will go against Prairie View. Good play call there. Selling the, the snap count there, Hayes. Then he finds a way to throw it up to his receiver incomplete pass. But you got to give credit to the senior in Hayes, selling the snap count, drawing off the defensive line for the offsides. Yeah, the play's going to wipe out a nice defensive play by Jew Anthony Parker in the corner of the end zone. Made a good defensive play to bat that one away. And so now the Tigers will get it a little closer for third down. And we have more whistles on the field. So they have to make another adjustment to the game clock. You can see Scott Johnson said put it back to 9.17. The clock was down to 9.10. So they added seven seconds back on the clock. And here come the Tigers again on a big third down and goal-to-go -go situation. Three yards for a touchdown. Hayes fakes it, rolls to his right. Fires into the corner, and he just threw that one away. Warren Newman was the intended receiver, but I think the pressure showed early. He just unloaded the football. Yeah, he had to get rid of the football early. It seems like he was running out of opportunity to throw the football to his teammates. As you can see in this replay here, it's a simple roll out here, play action pass by Hayes. A senior tried to find his receiver early, just ran out of opportunity there, just threw it away and give the ball, give an opportunity to the best kicker in the swack right now for a field goal. Yeah, Jackman had an 18-yard field goal in the first half, and he's coming on to attempt another short one here in the second half, but Hayes has done an outstanding job of managing managing the ball game. He really has. He hasn't made any big mistakes to this point. The one interception was thrown by Johnson. It was not thrown by Hayes. So here's Jackman coming on to attempt what appears to be a 19-yard field goal, and that one, he drills it. Wasn't the prettiest kick you've ever seen, but he got it right through there. And it's three points for Jackson State. They lead it 
27-7 in the third quarter. Butch Alcindor and Lemont Williams with you here today. We're watching Jackson State host Prairie View A&M. The Panthers find themselves trailing 27-7 with 9.02 to go here in the third quarter. Did you just say toast? Host. Oh. Excuse me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Host, <laughs> not toast. <laughs> I just want to make sure, but you didn't say toast. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> no, we're not toasting anything yet. Still, still got a ways to go. Number four, Xavier Johnson was back to return the kick for the Panthers. Instead, they will take over on the 25-yard line. So what's Coach Dooley and that offense has to do now to start generating some offense after Jackson State comes up with the first points of the second half? Well, I mean, if, you, if you're Coach Dooley right now, you got to put the ball back into your freshman quarterback hand to Connolly. Connolly found some success in the second quarter, finding a target in Hardy. you got to kind of continue to build on that here in the third quarter. Connolly swings it out, has a receiver, and he picks up a nice gain. That is Holcomb. Working his way upfield and a good gain on first down by the Panthers. And it's, it's ironic that, you know, Prairie View offense is back on the football field. You see Conley right here goes to Holcomb, the 6'6 receiver out of Summer Creek High School out of Humble, Texas. Is able to get away and find some positive yards. But Prairie View gets the ball with less than... Wow, the ball is fumbled again. Jackson State trying to recover it. And the Tigers do come away with it. Ryan Thayard with his second turnover of the game. He intercepted a pass in the first half. Now he comes up in the second half and he recovers a fumble to give the ball back to the Jackson State Tigers. Boy, Prairie View with another turnover. That's the fourth turnover here on the road for Prairie View this afternoon. As you can see, the ball fumbled out of the hands of the receiver. It was Kalen Riles, looks like number 85. And nice recovery there by Jackson State defenders, giving the ball back to the great manager in Hayes. Boy, I tell you, that that is really, if you're Prairie View, boy, you got to say, what can we do? That was a big play. They found they hit a couple of big plays on the drive. Riles was moving upfield, and he just caught the football up. And the Tigers come up with another recovery. Number 28, Ryan Thayer with his second turnover of the ball game. So Hayes comes right back out. He barely had time to get some water. <laughs> Hayes back on. His pass is tipped up in the air. And big number 92 was checking it out there. That's Jason Dumas. And he was eyeing a possible interception. It's, it's, it's one of those days, you know, yeah. right now. I mean, that's how you can describe it. We have 8.30 to go in the third quarter. It's one of those games for Prairie View where it seems like nothing can go right for you on the road here in a, just a tough environment. It just feels like Prairie View's continuing to shoot themselves in the foot with their turnovers. You got to give credit more to Jackson State right now and their manager and quarterback and Hayes doing an excellent job in front of his home fans. Hayes incomplete. That time it was intended for Jordan Williams. He got held up inside. Some of the J State players was wanted a flag on the play. They thought it might have been interference. Big number 93, Steven Scott, was a lineman who saw he was looking for number 91, got a hand on him, slowed him up just a little bit going to go down as an incomplete pass for the Tigers. Brings up a big third down. Hayes has Quentin Brown in the backfield. Of course, Jordan Johnson was injured in the first half. We've seen the two Browns in the second half. Pressure this time. He tries to dump it off to Brown, and he's going to be knocked down in the backfield. A big play by Anthony Stubbs. Number 20 was back there quickly for the Panthers. Yeah, the defensive coordinator for Prairie who with the blitz. As you can see, it coming right there in the face of Hayes. Good recovery speed there by the linebackers and the safety to be able to come in and stop Brown for any momentum, forcing another third down and out. Drew Anthony Parker back to return for the Prairie View Panthers. As Jackman gets set to punt the ball away again. As a punter, he's averaging 41.6, and he does have a long of 69 yards this year. Got that one away, chasing Parker way back inside of his 20-yard line. Parker picks up one block, 
Could not get away from the second guy, though. He's going to be pulled down at the 19-yard line. So the Panthers will get the football back. So no harm, no foul on that turnover. Thanks to a fine defensive effort. Would you take another look at Jalen Morton at this point? Uh, honestly, I would not because, uh, you know, you, you have a freshman and he's so delicate right now as far as his confidence and being able to continue to have some success on the road. I was continue to go with Conley and have a way to find – Conley didn't have it – so far hasn't turned the ball over, so I will keep him in the game. Don't know if Martin was injured or not in the first half or whether it was a coach's decision. We don't have any word on that so far. But Connolly still in, and this time he spun down in the backfield. A fine defensive play by the Tigers. Just a nice one-on-one -on -one block right there. You see the swim move out of the tackle, be able to get away from the guard to bring down Connolly for the sack. That's Khalil Johnson. Number 13, Connolly looking to pass again, has to pull it down. He scrambles out of the pocket for a short gain upfield before number 98, Charles Anderson, is there to wrap him up. Connolly loses the football right at the end. He takes a big shot there from the safety, but it <laughs> just so happened his teammate was there to recover for the football and keep Preview on this field. 6.51 to go here in the third quarter. And the Panthers are trying to... Another flag on the field, and Scott Johnson tries to restore order here, but it's going to go against Prairie View, so it will back the Panthers up again, and turnovers and penalty have been their big enemies in this game. Yeah, I, I go back to what I said originally in the opening. The team to play mistake-free football will win this game, and Prairie View has not played mistake-free football. Too many penalties, too many turnovers. Pass underneath by Connolly has a man, and it's a short gain, and then half of the Tigers show up to take him down. <laughs> That's Sarian Hokum again. He's made a couple of catches in this ball game. Nice group effort there for Jackson State defensively. As you can see, the freshman throws the ball across the middle of one, two, three, four, five, six. The whole defense <laughs> comes in. It cleans up the receiver. Good group effort there for Jackson State. You know, they've played with that type of passion the entire game so far. So a big down coming up here for Prairie View. The keeper this time by Connolly does a great job on the zone read. Look at him. He has no one in front of him. And Trazon Connolly is going to take it all the way in for a touchdown. A huge scramble by this freshman quarterback, and it pays off in a big way. But he did a great job holding that football in there on the zone read until the last second, and then he pulled it out. Excellent job there by the freshman out of Duncanville, Texas. He sells the fake and catch everyone off guard. And as he runs down the field, you can see here no one in sight beside the freshman and Conley as he picks up his first rushing touchdown on the road. Good job by Conley and Prairie View offense. Trazon Connolly goes 72 yards for the second Prairie View touchdown of the day. And the Panthers jump right back into this ball game with a touchdown run of 72 yards from their freshman quarterback. We're going to pause for a timeout now. Jackson State out in front, 27 to 14. Welcome back, everyone. And as you can see on your screen, penalties have played a huge role in this ballgame today. You see the Prairie View Panthers there. Ten penalties for 51 yards. And on the other side, Jackson State, right behind the Panthers, they have nine penalties for 84 yards. But the difference is that Jackson State is leading the game 27 to 14. <laughs> as Prairie View, you know, you don't want to have any penalties. Well, you can't say any penalties, but what hurts Prairie View the most is the four turnovers. I mean, having those major four turnovers at Jackson State on the road is really hurting them. But they're still trying to find a way to stay in this game. I mean, they have a freshman quarterback in Connolly able to sell the fake and be able to run for a touchdown. You never know, Butch. Prairie can sneak back into this game here and enter into the fourth quarter. So Elder kicks it off near the sidelines, and it goes out of bounds. Warren Newman was over there to make sure that it did. So that will be a penalty against 
the Panthers. So we can add a little more to that graphic here. And it's going to give the Tigers excellent field position as they take over the football, leading 27-14 in this one. And if you're Coach Dooley right now and you want to take your defense, turnovers, try to find a way to strip the football or get a, a fumble recovery because they're only a turnover away from getting back into this game. They are a turnover array. That is exactly right. I mean, they are very close. You know, we talked about how P PV has won the last four games in this series. The Panthers also have been really good. Last week, though, at home, they lose to Alcorn State 27-13, and Jackson State lost to Southern 41-7. So both teams trying to get back on the winning track this week. Jared Hayes has gone all the way at quarterback today, number five. He's done an excellent job. The senior from central Louisiana. Hands inside to Juvon Brown, number 22. We mentioned before, he's the 5'9", 190-pound senior from Barbers Hill High School. He's from Mount Bellevue. It's nice to see him getting some action here yeah. in the second half. I wanted to know who was going to step in for Johnson once he went out with a leg injury and seeing the senior... Number 22 out of Texas, to be able to step in those shoes is very huge for him as well as the program, getting the opportunity to play in front of the home fans. Yeah, and the Tigers, are they really have an injury problem at the running back now because remember Keyshawn Harper yeah. could not play today with an ankle injury. So here goes Hayes again. He hands to the other Brown. This time it's Quentin Brown, and he picks up three yards inside, just driving forward on a power run. And if you're Coach Hendrick Rex now for Jackson State, you want to be very conservative, play very conservative football, not really force anything, you know, run with the two-headed monster in the brown and brown uh, running back combo. And if you need a first down for our throwing the football, you have a really good manager in Hayes. He can connect with his receivers. He can. You know, that, that Prairie View defense has really been up and down in this one. They've, they've done a really good job when they've been close in near the goal line. And they've come away with sacks in this ball game, but here they are being asked to come up with another big stop as Javon Brown takes it around the left side and he picks up a nice jump. And also utilize the stiff arm on that, as you can see when we show this replay here. Watch Brown, the senior, gets on the outside. Good blocking up front, but watch this stiff arm right there as he pushed down the defender to pick up another three more yards. Excellent job there by the senior Brown out of Mount Bellevue, Texas. Yeah. You know, life as a defensive lineman is just not fair sometimes <laughs> because you got a blocker hanging on you, you got a running back throwing you down into the ground. So a big play for a first and 10 for the Tigers. Hayes turns, hands to Brown again. It's Quinton Brown. And he's going to pick up some tough yardage inside before about five Panthers threw him back into the backfield. Big 93, Steven Scott. One of the Panthers helping him out. As you can see, Butch here, things are starting to get a little chippy here late in the third quarter. Brown momentum will stop. As you can see, about five or six Prairie View defenders, a little shoving and pushing there at the end of the play. Good job there by the officiating crew to kind of get things broken up before anything really got started. Willie Green also involved with that big white wave there as the Panthers showed up in mass to knock him back into the backfield. So it's going to bring up a second down and about seven yards to go for the Tigers. Hayes to throw it again. Has some pressure. Forced out of the pocket. Dancing around and finally he goes nowhere. Number 90, Willie Green was right there to cause him a lot of problems. And we talked about Prairie defense need to step up huge this series. He either force a turnover and, or stop Jackson State offense. As you can see there, Hayes, the senior quarterback, doing a really good job managing the offense this, this game. You can see all kind of pressure coming around Hayes as he tried to get away from that pressure, falls down for the third down. A lot of pressure there. You know, in a game earlier this year against Grambling, the Panthers recorded nine sacks. So they are definitely capable of pressuring the quarterback and putting a lot of heat on him and forcing some turnovers. 2.26 to go here in the third. A nice fake by Hayes. Fires has a wide open receiver near the sidelines. That's Warren Newman. And he steps out of bounds after picking up another first down for the Tigers. Man, I tell you right now, Jackson State is playing huge in this third quarter, especially off the play action pass. Hayes does an excellent job selling the fake, but he finds a wide open running back out of the backfield for the first down. 
No, you're exactly right, because when you make that good a fake, yeah. it's going to help open things up in the secondary for your receivers, and he did an excellent job there, and Warren Newman broke wide open on the play. Newman came into the game with 15 catches, so he's up to about 18 now. Hayes turns, and he hands to Brown, sweeping right, breaks a couple of tackles, and then he turns the corner for a big gain. So you saw an example of that offensive line getting out in front and creating something. And you also see Brown being very patient as he really takes his time and allow his guys to set up his blocking so he'll be able to get those running lanes and pick up some more positive yards and help his team get into the red zone. Good job there by the offensive line, also Brown. You're right. He's just a sophomore, but he showed a lot of patience on that play, waiting for his big guys to get the blocks, and then he just increased his speed and went through the hole. Just a nice, patient job by Quentin Brown. And the handoff goes inside this time to Juvon Brown. So that Brown-to-Brown -Brown attack <laughs> is paying off big time right now for the Tigers. Yeah, that Brown-to-Brown -Brown combo is really too much for Prairie View defense right here in this third quarter. Just a simple handoff by Hayes to Brown, but you can see the senior able to fight his way against Prairie View defense. But the most important part there, the clock continued to run for Jackson State. Right now, that Brown attack is turning the Panthers' defense blue if, <laughs> if they don't come up with a big stop here on the drive because you, you put your finger right on it. They're chewing up the clock and the yardage, and now we have a whistle on the field. As the officials gather to uh, talk it over to see what this one's about. You know, they've also been, they've reset the clock several yeah. times today. That, that's been a problem, too. He's had to put time back on the clock. And we have 28 seconds right now to go here in the third quarter. And let's see what this is about. You want to say he's probably resetting the game clock? Yeah, he said something about the game clock, but it goes from, I don't think 360 is right either. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's why they're going to have a stoppage on the, on the field again. Here we go. He wanted to go to 36 from 28. Now they're ticking down again. And they have already started the clock because the Tigers, the ball has been set. Tigers with it on offense, looking at a second and six. Handoff to Juvon Brown, a huge hole, and Brown is down to about the three-yard line. Juvon Brown, the senior out of Mount Bellevue, Texas. You can't tell him he can't run because this young man is running hard against Prairie View in the second half. Coming in off the bench with some fresh, fresh legs, you can definitely tell Juvon Brown Wants to play and wants a touchdown here in the second half. Tigers are playing some power football here in the second half, and, and they have shown the ability today to play whatever they need to play. If they need to play finesse and get the ball to the wide outs on the outside, they've done that. They've come back here in the second half, and they play played power football. And, of course, when Johnson was in there, they had the ability to just finesse it down the field. And before they can get the snap off, that is the horn to signal the end of the third quarter. And as we go to break, so far, Jackson State has been in control. They lead it 27 to 14. 500 and LS500H. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Fifteen minutes to go here in Jackson, Mississippi, and you see the Jackson State Tigers leading the Prairie View A&M Panthers 27-14. Right now, the Tigers are knocking on the door again. We have just started the first quarter, fourth quarter, first play of the fourth quarter, and that is Brown with another power run powering his way into the end zone for a Jackson State touchdown. And you knew one of the Browns was going to score a touchdown because so far <laughs> in the fourth quarter, the Browns, is, I mean, throughout the second half, the Browns have been very active running the football, the one-two punch for Jackson State offense. 
Good job there by the sophomore to be able to fall in for the touchdown for Jackson State. Yeah, just a great job by that offensive line and Quentin Brown. He used all of his 195 there. He's probably a little closer to 200. Yeah. Especially if you catch him after lunch. <laughs> He'll be right near 200, but he powered his way in, so that will bring on Christian Jackman to attempt the extra point as the Tigers stretch their lead. Jackman's kick is up, and it is good. It is right on the money. And just like that, the Tigers find themselves with a 33 to 14 lead thanks to Quentin Brown, who has no quit in him after that touchdown run. Bench Samsung QLED TV. You can't look away. Fourth quarter action in Jackson, Mississippi, and you can see the marching storm from Prairie View AM. And they're very cheerful now, but really their football field team would love to get some cheering going on on the field. They'd love to get something going on this drive to get another touchdown to get right back in this ball game. Yeah, they would love to have their freshman quarterback run down the sideline or run down the field like he did on that last series to even score the second touchdown on the road. Conley needs to continue to have some success here in the fourth quarter. Prairie's going to find a way to get cut down this lead and get back into this football game. Here come the Panthers on the return. It's Xavier Johnson, and he takes it out to the 35-yard line. So a nice return on the kickoff return by Johnson. Number four does a great job. You know, and, and, and sometimes you can get yourself in a hole early, and it's very tough to dig yourself out of it. And that's what happened. We saw Christian Mosley fumble that ball early in the game, and the Tigers recovered at the two-yard line, and that's a tough, tough turnover to over, overcome because it was 14 nothing, just like that. And so. also, Butch, is tough when you're on the road. I mean, it's even, I mean, just think about it. Four turnovers is always tough, but when you turn the ball like that consecutively back-to-back -back in the first quarter on the road, you dig yourself in the hole, it's very hard for you to get out of that hole. That was a completion to Zarian Hokum, and he got hit in the head because he's down, and right there, he may have gotten a forearm to the head, and he's down on the ground right now. Number five, Marco Gladney, who's been hitting everybody pretty hard today. And he, he's living up to it. He's another big hit. Yeah, Gladney's been very active and aggressive from a cornerback standpoint. He's been coming down, cutting guys' legs down, as well as taking shots at him. Not, uh, you know, trying to do it you know, maliciously yeah. or being rude. He's just... He's just playing his position. That's yeah, not about. not a dirty play at all. I mean, he's just coming in with some really hard hits. So the Panthers have it now. First and ten. Fires over the middle. It's incomplete. He was trying to go to Jose Madrano. Got his hands on it, but just couldn't pull it in. Jose is a six foot two, two hundred and five pound freshman from Alvin. And Oscar, actually, Butch, if you look at this replay here, that's probably the best place the freshman quarterback can put the ball for his tall tight end. Get it up high in the seams. Unfortunately, they had an incomplete pass. Handoff inside to Tucker, and Tucker with some room to roam. Now, he has a big game. And you know what? He, he's never really gotten involved in the game. Today. Not at all. He, I mean, you gotta give credit to Jackson State defensive front. Shutting down the junior running back out of Tyler, Texas, and Tucker taking away his ability to run the football effectively throughout this game. Yeah, and he, they rely on him a, a lot. We've mentioned that he's already had two games this year where he went over 200 yards rushing. So he's a big factor for the Panthers. This time, Connolly is going to have to keep it. Runs up the middle before he's smacked down by Darius Woods, the big six foot, 245 pound senior linebacker. He's from Jacksonville, Florida, but that was a nice hit. He reacted to the play quickly. And you can see Prairie right now, but it's going back to the up tempo style of play to try to get back into this game. Connolly hands it to Tucker. Not much going inside. Charles Anderson, we've called his name a few times today, made another big stop, number 98. Your Anderson, as well as Hamner, as well as other players on that defensive front has been very active for Jackson State Tigers defense. You know, and the coach told us uh, this week, that his defensive line may have been the strongest part of that defense. Absolutely. And we're seeing that on the field today. Connolly rolling left, has a man open, gives it off to Holcomb, who's back in the game, loses his footing, and he slipped down, but not before he could pick up a first down for the Panthers. Yeah, the 6'6", 
wide receiver out of Houston back in the game. That's good to see. But he loses footing right there and gets a little frustrated as he falls out of bounds. So the Panthers are operating first and 10 now. This time the handoff goes to Callup Broach. A short game. We do have an injured Panther on the play. It looks like it's number 50, the John Jones. You know, he's the right tackle on the, on the team, and he appears to be shaken up on the play. A 6'4", 315-pound sophomore from Garland, Texas. As the trainers look him over. Yes, that's why the injury took place, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, I couldn't see it on there, but unsportsmanlike conduct was called. He's ejected from the game, number 26. Number 26, Qdarian Barnett, the linebacker, 5'10", 215 pounds, and he is ejected from the game. Second player ejected today for unsportsmanlike conduct as he heads to the locker room quickly. And when you're leading 34-14, you don't want to see that happen. You don't want to have anybody do anything like that. So Panthers on the move again. Tries to come back with a little draw. Tries to come back the opposite way. Tucker's still on his feet, but it's just a sea of blue out there, and he had no place to go. Excellent pursuing job right there by the defensive lineman as well as the linebackers for Jackson State. You can see here pressure up front. Tucker is able to bounce from that, but watch the guy's pursuit. Tucker, good job there. Good good effort for Jackson State. And DeWanye Tucker is down. Number one. He's not that big, folks. 5'6", 175 pounds. He's a junior from Terrell, Texas. He's the big three, big play threat we've talked about all day. He's actually their leading rusher, and he's being helped off the field. Let's take another look at it and see if we can pick up where he got hurt. You see Tucker trying to get away from the defenders right there. Goes down, but as he goes down, you can see him bend backwards. His, his right leg looks like he got caught underneath the defender. Yeah. That's the reason why he needed help off the football. And we're not going to try to diagnose from here, but sometimes that's when you get a knee injury like that, when they roll up on top of you like that and you bounce back up. And We certainly hope it's not that as Connolly comes out again. Looking to pass. Has a man open near the sidelines, and it's dropped. He was trying to hit Zarian Holcomb, the big 6'6", 235-pound junior tight end, but he couldn't hang on to that one. Yeah, Holcomb is having some issues as far as keeping his footing. The last couple of plays we've seen the ball coming his way, he's either sliding or he can't keep his balance. At 6'6", I know it's very tough for a young man to come out his break at that size, 6'6", 230. But right now, it seems like he's losing his footing late in this game for Prairie View. There is some good news for Prairie View. The left tackle... The John Jones back in the ball game, so he was just shaken up. He's back on the field. Pass for the end zone and a great catch by Zarian Holcomb. All six six of his frame, he extended it and goes out and makes a great catch for the touchdown for the Prairie View Panthers. Well, just when I say his footing looks bad, he proves me wrong. Holcomb, the six six out of Houston, Texas, is able to catch that pass in a man-to-man -man coverage. You knew exactly where the freshman wanted to go in Conley. He got a great opportunity to go to the big target in the 6'6 tight end slash wide receiver in Holcomb. Excellent pitch and catch there between the quarterback and the receiver for the touchdown for Prairie View. David Arrington was on the coverage, but it's not a lot you can do when you have a big 6'6 tight end. You know, you do the best you can, but Zarian Holcomb was able to outjump him and extend into the end zone for the touchdown. Holcomb, you mentioned, from Houston, played his high school ball at Summer Creek High School. And uh, really, he's a junior making his presence felt today. Again, you can see in this replay here, just man-to-man -man coverage. Take advantage of the size of the 6'6 frame against a smaller defender as Holcomb flexes his muscles, showing that, hey, I can take advantage of any guy like that, any opportunity, any time. Good job there by the junior receiver. So here comes the flags after the Prairie View score, and all of a sudden we have a 34-21 ball game. Just when you think the game is out of, out of reach for Prairie View, they found a way to get back into this ball game with a, a quick touchdown here. For Coach Dooley, you got to find a way defensively to stop 
Jackson State here in this series and give back the ball back to your freshman quarterback in Conley. Yeah, with 11.41 to go, you're looking to produce some pressure and produce a turnover off of that pressure. I mean, that's what they have to get back here. And they tried an onside kick already. Do you think they're even thinking about that in this situation? I, I don't believe so. If I'm Coach Dooley, I trust my defense here. You have to have faith in your defensive coordinator as well. Kick the ball deep and try to give a chance to, for your defense to be able to stop them and give the ball back to your offense. Zach Elder, number 37, will kick it off. Zach is from San Antonio. Kicks one high and deep. Chases Newman back all the way into the end zone, and he's going to touch it down. So the Tigers will take over on their own 25-yard line. So we will see what that Prairie View defense can come up with here. You know, the secondary all season long has been the strength of that defense. When we talked to Coach, he talked about their talent and their experience in that secondary, and, and now is the time you want it to show. Yeah, the secondary ended up picking up an uh, inter interception in the first half against Johnson when he threw the football, and their defense has brought, brought pressure here in the second half as well. So if they can kind of combine that two efforts in this fourth quarter, it will give Prevue an opportunity to stop Jackson State and give the ball back to the offense. So Hayes has gone all the way at quarterback. Hands it to Juvon Brown. He goes inside, picks up about three yards. And there's Steven Scott, the big 280-pounder, making the stop inside. He's from Manville High School. So a lot of players from the Houston area getting some action in today's game. It's good to see that Jackson State comes down to Texas and be able to recruit guys here in the Houston area, as well as Prairie View stays home and get a chance to recruit some local talent and be able to use them on the football field. A lot of really good football players coming out of that Houston area. You can't go wrong recruiting Houston. So second down for the Tigers. Another hand to Brown, and number 22 jukes his way to a nice gain inside. Good blocking on the left side of that line. Opening a nice hole for Juvon Brown. And what we're seeing right now out of Jackson State here is you check out the replay. Just a simple handoff, but Juvon Brown just showed some power on that last play there as he met the defender on the second level to pick up the first down. What we're seeing from Jackson State is very conservative running football. They're not going to take any shots down the field that I anticipate. They want to run the football, control this football uh, clock, as well as get the victory. And they have done a really outstanding job here in the second half of doing just that. Running the football, picking up the tough yardage. This time, it's Quentin Brown. We've talked about him from Monticello, Mississippi. He's a little bigger than the other Brown. Quentin Brown takes it inside after a short gain on the play. Tackle made by Jermaine Jackson. Not the Jackson 5, Jermaine, <laughs> but... <laughs> Maybe his mom was a fan. You never know how that happens, how yeah. it works out that way. Jermaine Jackson on the tackle for the Panthers. Handoff to Brown, and he is dropped in the backfield. Steven Scott, who's played an outstanding game here today, quickly beats his man and makes the tackle in the backfield. Yeah, Steven Scott, the red shirt junior out of Manville, Texas. Manville High School was able to beat his man and also get penetration in the backfield as he knocks Brown down for the tackle for loss. And big fella got up doing a little dance. I mean, that's something <laughs> to dance about when you get in the backfield that quickly. 9.20 to go here in the ball game. Jackson State working on the clock, trying to burn this one out. They lead it 34-21 to 21 over Prairie View. Hayes is going to throw one. Dumps it off short to Juvon Brown. And again, 93, Steven Scott there to help out on the tackle. Big fella's active. I mean, he comes in 280, but, uh, you know, he can really move, and he does a good job of going sideline to sideline. Speaking of doing a good job for every defense, you know, it's three and out right there for them. We talked about how can they slow down the fast-paced, conservative Jackson State offense, and right there to force a three and out, punting the football. Now Jackson State defense is coming on the field against uh, a late surging Prairie View offense. You know, I really like the job Coach John Hendrick has done in this ball game today. Had a short week to prepare for this. He got that interim label, and there's Jackman's kick. 
going deep to the Panthers. It's hauled in by Jew Anthony Parker down the sidelines. He has some room to go. One man to beat Jackman, and he did just enough to trip him up. And Jew Anthony Parker had a lot of wide open spaces in front of him. And I think it, it caught him by surprise as well. As you can see in this replay here, good blocking up front. As he gets away from the first defender, the second one, good block there. You can just see him running out of gas right here. <laughs> as he, did, <laughs> he didn't know that he was going to be able to get that far on that punt return. That was very close to being a tripping call on the play because it was Jackman who went over there, and he didn't really make an attempt to tackle him. He kind of stuck his leg out, and I really couldn't tell how much he got him. But... Uh, it would not have been a stretch for the officials to call tripping on that play and, and tacked on to the big run back by Jew Anthony Parker. And the handoff inside is going to go to Broach. And he picks up a short game for the Panthers, but they've been trying to go with the up-tempo all day, and I, I would imagine we're going to see them really try to pick it up here. Oh, absolutely. So since the bird scene right now, Prairie has some great field position. Hayes has a man open. And once again, it's Zarian Hokum, and he slipped again. He cannot stay yeah. on his feet. He hit that open spot in the zone, and when he tried to adjust for the ball, he slipped. At 6'6", six, six, it's very hard to come out of your break. You can see him running right there, sliding down. <laughs> you, you can see the frustration in Hokum as he hits the ground because Hokum and, and the combination between Hokum and Connolly is working in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he wanted that football, and Connolly makes a mistake. It's a misread between the quarterback and... And the wide receiver, he was trying to go to Marcus Hardy, but number three, C.J. Holmes, stepped in front and recorded the interception for the Tigers. Just when you want to see how the freshman is going to play out this game, he makes his first huge mistake, a freshman mistake, his first interception to C.J. Holmes. C.J. Holmes, a six-foot, 175-pounder from New Orleans, and what a big defensive play. And you got to think that was just a misread between the receiver and the quarterback because he threw that where he thought the receiver was going to be, and he kept going. Yeah, he threw it in a position where you thought that C.J. Holmes caught by surprise that he didn't think the receiver was going to be beside him. But C.J. Holmes was wide open as he got that interception. You know, Conley, as a freshman, you know, you got to give him some latitude. Sometimes you're going to make bad decisions, and right there, the freshman made a bad decision throwing his first NIT on the road. Did you see that turnover chain yeah. on the sidelines? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. We get another look at that if we can. That would be nice. And every time they get a turnover, somebody gets the turnover chain. And right there, it was C.J. Holmes. And uh, Scott Johnson is going to do what he's done a lot today. He's going to go over and talk it over. As we take another look at the play and the interception. They're actually reviewing the interception to see if he actually caught the ball, and I think he did. He got his hands underneath the football to be able to make that complete interception. Looked like, yeah, it looked like he clearly got both hands underneath and, uh, and scooped it up. It's just a fine defensive play by C.J. Holmes. And you got to give credit to Conley. I mean, so far the freshman is trying to hold it down for Prairie View and been put in a tough situation on the road. His first turnover here in the fourth quarter might cost his team the victory. So the interception is good. And you're right, Lima, because when you're playing from behind like that, the margin for error is very, very slim. I mean, you don't have, you cannot afford to make any mistakes at all when you're trying to catch up and play catch up. And that's what happened right there. And again, just a good defensive play, though, by C.J. Holmes. The ball comes in, and yes, it looks like both hands are underneath that football. And the handoff goes to Brown. Quentin Brown, and he does what he does best. He get, grinds out that short yardage inside. We're down to 7.15 to go in the ball game. A three-yard pickup by Quentin Brown. And if you coach Hendrick right now, just continue to run the football with Brown. And, you, and, you know, just be conservative. Keep the clock running. Don't do anything fancy. Let's get the victory. Brown 
in the backfield behind Hayes. Hayes sprints out to the right. Fires near the sidelines and is going to be incomplete on the play. And, and that's the first time he tried to uh, pass the football. And, of course, that will stop the clock. But, you know, I started to say just a couple of minutes ago, we were talking about John Hendrick. He comes in with that interim tag on him. And you look at the moves he's made today, and you have to be very impressed what he did in his first outing. I love the timeout he called in the first half when his team was making some silly mistakes on the play, got the whole team over and told everybody, hey, we're not going to do this. We don't want to be undisciplined and make silly mistakes. Yeah, and he regrouped the guys. He got a chance to, hey, let's get back to the bases. Let's refocus. Let's get back to what we know how to play, and that's Jackson State football. Big play might have been holding at the bottom of your screen there, but Hayes was able to get out of the pocket. Still on his feet, a nice spin move. And Jared Hayes makes a nice run for the Tigers. He's just not a good manager. He's also a good decision maker. As you can see, Jared Hayes, the senior, feels the pressure coming, uses his legs. Well, watch this. Woo! As he gets away from the defenders, he's able to cut back inside and keep the clock going. Smart decision by the senior quarterback in Jared Hayes. And how about some of his big friends hustling over there like number 7, 70, Dante Fisher to help out and make a block downfield. That's no small effort because Dante is 6'3", 350 pounds, and the big guy just kept rolling on downhill. That's really good effort from an offensive lineman. So this time he hands off to Brown again. Quentin Brown brings the hit a big shot on will skinner i mean he hit him right in the chest an aggressive run by brown you can see brown here the sophomore gets the handoff on the sweep and boom he knocks right into the defender for some more positive yards good job there by the sophomore 555 to go in the ball game and the panthers once again are going to work chewing up that clock You know, as this game has gone along, you could see the uh, confidence continue to grow for Hayes. He hands to Brown. Javon Brown this time. Javon Brown, number 22, with a nice little pickup inside. And they're just using power football right now. And, you know, it's just working. It's, it's just working. smash mouth football right now. They're using Brown, Javon Brown up the middle. They want to get to the outside. They use a sophomore and the other Brown. So it's just real simple football, just smash mouth football for Jackson State here late in the fourth quarter. It's a simple handoff up the middle. As you can see, Javon Brown just keep his legs moving, turning, and falling off the defenders for some more positive yards. Let's look at the rushing totals now for the Tigers. Jordan Johnson, who did not play in the second half, he was injured in the first, eight carries for 74 yards and that 59-yard touchdown. Juvon Brown, nine carries for 56 yards. And Quinton Brown, 15 carries for 48 yards, but he has two touchdowns. So it's been the running attack with three touchdowns and 175 yards on the ground in this ball game. That's a very impressive impressive uh, showing right there by that offensive line. Javon Brown again. He loses the football and the Panthers from Prairie View come away with the recovery. Another huge break there for Prairie View defense as they get a turnover late in the fourth quarter. You gotta just when you think Prairie View's out of this game, they find a way to stay in it. Good penetration there by the defensive line as they strip the ball out of Brown's hands. Forcing the fumble, giving the ball back to their offense and giving them some hope here in late in the fourth quarter. It's number 91, Donald Hall, the 6'3", 260-pound defensive tackle who made the recovery. Donald Hall, just a freshman, coming out there making a big play for the Panthers. And that's what they needed right there. They needed a turnover. So Prairie View, the pass is completed to number 85, Kalen Riles. And Riles fighting for extra yardage as we have 4.46 to go in the ball game. Panthers will go quickly now. Connolly again. Nice pocket. Being chased from behind. Pitches it out to Tucker. And he's going to be taken down a little short of the first down. The Wanye Tucker. 
Stop short of the first down. It's good to see Tucker back in the game. Last time we saw him in the ball game, Butch, he had that leg injury. It's good to see the junior running back back into the game. Nice tackle there by Keontre Hampton on Tucker as he really got to him before he could get starting on the get started on the play. Clock continues to tick. 4.07 to go now. Pass underneath to Tucker. And he gets what he can get, and then he gets down quickly, and the Panthers will try to hurry to the line of scrimmage and get off another play. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the Panthers started to use some of their timeouts here less than four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Connolly off to Zarian Hokum, and this is the, they're re getting into the area where Hokum is going to become the focal point of the offense. His big 6'6 frame, anytime you're in the red zone, that would be my first look when you yeah. got a guy that, that that's big. That and, big. And what you need to do if you're Connolly, throw the ball high so he can use that tall 6'6 six, six frame to be able to get the, to get the reception. Connolly near the sidelines has Hardy, and he steps out of bounds after making the catch. Haven't said Hardy name in, a, in, in some time now because Hardy was his main target for Connolly in the first half. Hardy find, find his first reception here in the second half. Yeah, he's had a big game today. Really big game. Panthers on the move. This time it goes to Xavier Johnson, and he gets out of bounds quickly near the 10 yard line. So Connolly doing a great job of working the short pass. Yeah, Connolly's doing a better job getting the ball out of his hands a lot quicker to his receivers so they can make plays and pick up positive yards. Clock is down to three minutes to go in the ball game. Connolly looking, lost one high and too high. He was trying to get it over, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. Looking for number 25. Um, I guess it was 85, Riles on the play. He was trying to hit Riles, and just a little bit strong on the pass. Prairie View with a lot of size in the wide receiver department, and that, that's really good when you get close near the goal line. Connolly lost it high for Holcomb. He hauls it in, and it's a touchdown for the Panthers. Or is it? The officials are discussing again. Yes, it's a touchdown. A little conversation in the back of the end zone, but he went right to the guy we thought he would go to, Zarian Holcomb. The 6'6", 235-pound junior hauls it in for a Prairie View touchdown. Impressive pass there by Connolly, the freshman, to the junior wide receiver out of Houston. And Holcomb, they connected for their second reception here in the, in the fourth quarter. As you can see, Holcomb celebrates with his teammates. Good job there by the freshman quarterback, finding his main target in the fourth quarter, and that's, Hunt, and that's Holcomb. You know, I don't mind the officials talking about that as long as they get it right. And yeah. they wanted to make sure there was an official right there at the back of the end zone. So he wanted to discuss it because maybe he didn't see the catch. Maybe he just saw the feet. And let's get, make sure we make the right call. And that's what they did. But the Panthers, the never say die Panthers, because 245 to go in this ball game, they're going to pull to within 34-28 if he can convert on this extra point. And with also three timeouts left in the fourth quarter, that can help him too. Their defense is forcing turnovers, so this game is not over by a long shot. So they're going to take another look at the touchdown, and as you can see right there, did he maintain possession of the football? That's the big thing. He absolutely maintained possession. As you can see here, he gets both hands around the football. He secures the football, brings it to his chest, and as he wraps his hand there, you can see him falling back in the back of the end zone. That's a touchdown, in my opinion. Definitely clearly had his feet in bounds. No problem there. Brings it into his chest. That's a touchdown. Yeah. And all of a sudden, if they make this extra point, the Panthers are going to be down six. As you look in the second half, and, and we're going to hear from Scott Johnson here in just a second. So the officials got together, made the right call in the back of the end zone, and they just confirmed it. Uh, you know, when you look at this game, if he makes the extra point here, as Zach Elder will be on to attempt it, 
if it's a six six point game, you know, if, if you're at Jackson State, you're going to start thinking about some of those opportunities they had deep, where they had to kick field goals, where they had an opportunity to get touchdowns, and penalties pushed them back away from the goal line. So here's Elder, and he absolutely drilled that one. And as we head to break, the Cardiac Cats, the Panthers, make a move. They pull to within six. 34 to 28, Jackson State goes still out front. Fake stake. And we are back, everyone. And as you can see, that is the correct score. You know, we talked at the top of the game about how these two teams had so much in common. And Prairie View is such an offensive threat, you know they could not stay down for the entire game. Earlier this year, against Arkansas Pine Bluff, they had 815 yards of total offense. Yeah, so they can, you know, come up with the offense when they have to. you got to give credit to their offensive coordinator, Ted White. I mean, we talked about talked to Coach Dooley this week. He talked about Ted White coaching up the offense as well as the quarterbacks. He's done an excellent job here in the second half getting this team back into this ball game, calling the right plays for the freshman quarterback in Conley. You know, they're like one stop or one turnover away from having a chance to take the lead in this ballgame. And the way their defense has been playing here in the second half has been impressive. I mean, they've been able to force turnovers, even though Hayes is doing a better job as far as managing the team. But their defense is forcing turnovers against Jackson State, which allowed them to get back into this game and be down by six points. And they also found the right formula on offense. They had been struggling to continue drives, but that last possession, I mean, they did a great job of just getting the ball into the hands of the playmakers and picking up, and they did it very quickly. They moved the ball down the field, got it into the end zone very quickly. So that's Zach Elder here, and with 2.45 to go, too early for an onside kick at this point, correct? Right? Yeah, it's too early. I, I believe, you know, what helped Prairie defense is put pinning Jackson State back on the 25-yard line, allowing them to be able to make plays defensively. And they go oh. for an onside kick. Well, just when I <laughs> thought they didn't need one, they end up going for it. But it's recovered by Kobe Gates. So the Tigers will have it up around the 40. So it really wasn't those one of those onside kicks there that was spinning a lot and was hard to handle. That one wasn't uh, executed very well. And it's recovered right there by the Tigers. Yeah, didn't have a, a huge bounce on that onside, onside kick, which really couldn't help. It couldn't help the uh, Prairie View players to get down there and try to make a play. Yeah, you, you like to get that in-between hop, yeah. and it didn't. that one was just too good of a hop, man. That was, that was when you throw the guy out at first every time on that one, when you get yeah. that hit to short. So the Tigers will have it first and 10. Great field position, and then Brown is going to be written down by Dumas. Jason Dumas, number 92, with a big stop in the backfield. So right away, Prairie View comes up with a big defensive play as the clock continues to tick. And in your first year, Coach Coach Dooley, what do you do? How do you, you utilize your timeouts? You have all three timeouts. As the clock continues to tick, do you start taking your timeouts after this play here? That's going to be a good to see you right about that because it was short. You held them to a short gain on first down. And so now this makes second down even bigger. And you have to think the Tigers will keep it on the ground. We have movement up front, and it may have been illegal procedure against the offense. So with two minutes to go, the Tigers are going in the wrong direction right now. Yeah, they definitely are going in the wrong direction, even though they want to play conservative football here with the league with six points. That play there forced them now to be able to step up and try to make some positive yards out of this 12 and 15 yards to go. They will replay second down as the clock continues to tick down. Jared Hayes, number five, turns, hands it to Brown. That's Quentin Brown, number 48. He spins away from one tackler, but not much room there at all. So that Prairie View defense once again steps up and come up comes up with a big defensive play and it appears Prairie View will use one of their timeouts right here with 134 to go in the ball game 
Just, take it, yeah. just a huge stop there for the front seven for Prairie View. You knew a lot of pressure is on your defense right now to make some stops. You like to, you like to see the guys come and make a group effort. Good job there by Prairie View defense. Their defense has played a whale of a game here in the second half. They, they got the wake-up call at halftime, and they've come out and done a great job, and they've helped to put the offense in position to come back and have a chance to win this ball game. And you've got to give credit to their assistant head coach slash defensive back coach, and that's Bubba McDowell. You know him very well, yeah. Butch, being a former Houston Oiler. He's a guy that's been with the program for quite some time, earning the assistant head coach position, but also coaching up those DBs. Oh, he does. And Bubba understands great comebacks better than anybody else <laughs> could possibly understand comebacks because he was on the field when the Buffalo Bills came back and knocked off the Houston Oilers yeah. in that unforgettable game. And right now, his Panthers are trying to be the Buffalo Bills to see if they can't come back and steal this ball game. Third down, 13 yards to go for the Tigers. 134 to go in the ball game. The hand go, handoff goes to Javon Brown, but we do have a flag on the play. Looks like a face mask. Oh, boy, that would be a very untimely penalty if that's what it is. 129 to go in the game now, and Scott Johnson is singling that it was a face mask. And it's an automatic first down. That's a huge penalty right there. Yeah, that breaks the back of the defense right there. As you can see, the grabbing of the face mask, automatic first down, puts too much pressure now on the Panthers' defense to make a stop as the clock continues to run here late in the fourth quarter. That was Steven Scott, and it was unintentional. He was just reaching back, trying to grab the, anything he could grab, accidentally got the face mask, and it's going to cost the Panthers a first down on third and 13. They get a first down on the face mask penalty. Quentin Brown now protecting the football with both hands as he churns out some yardage inside. Picks up about seven or eight. Fifth, the clock continues to tick. 54 seconds to go in the ball game. Good hard run there by the sophomore Quentin Brown, the go-to guy in the second half. I asked you, Butch, at halftime, who would step up big for the running game for the Jacksonville, I mean, for Jackson State, Jack, Jackson State Tigers offense, and it's Ben Brown. Brown has filled some huge shoes as Johnson went down. You gotta like, I like the fact that he was very patient running the football, but also had the vision to be able to cut back and be able to set up his offensive line to be able to give him the running lane to be successful in the second yeah, half. Yeah, and he's a young guy, and he had no idea how much he would get to play in this ball game. He thought he'd get to play some because we knew Keyshawn Harper was out with that ankle injury, but he came in and had to play a lot more than he could have possibly have thought he would have to play, and he's done a whale of a job here in the second half. He, he's gotten that tough yardage that has allowed the clock to continue to run. And you see that Jackson State sideline, and Coach John Hendrick is going to be very happy about this one if his team can hang on and bring this victory to the house. It's a tough situation. You have a coaching change midweek, yeah. and... You have to decide just how much you can do. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to throw too much at the, the guys and, and confuse everybody, but you want to put your stamp on this football team, too. You want to have your signature on this team. And the thing about Coach Hendrick is the fact that he knew what he had coming into this game, and he utilized that in the first half and throughout this ball game. And as we look at the standings right there, you can see if Jackson State hangs on and if they knock off Prairie View in this game, they would go to 3-2 and two in the conference standings, and that would put them near the top. It would put them in great shape in case Alcorn State stumbled. Yeah, they put them in a very competitive spot there as Alabama and m is right now at 3-2. and two. Without knowing their current score of their game, if things stay the same, it would be a two-way tie in the second place. As we look at the standings in the West, Southern at 5-3, and three, Prairie View at 3-5. and five. If they could come back, they would be even in even better shape if somehow they could score a touchdown here and steal one in Jackson, Mississippi, they would be a 3-2. Yeah, they'd definitely be a 3-2, a place that they would like to be. But right now, they got an uphill battle as they have Southern leading the conference as well as Grambling State. Yeah, and when you look at Southern and Grambling, it, it, it's, it's not over. No, it's it is not. far from over right now when you talk about the race to be the champions in the SWAC. So this is Hayes. And he gives to Brown. 
And Brown does a great job of getting down and staying in bounds. And now we have a fight on the field. And you hate to see that at this point in the ball game. Things have been chippy all game between both teams. Start, I mean, frustration has been going each and every quarter. You do not want to see that take place here late in the fourth quarter. But like you said, the smart play there by the sophomore running back in Brown, be able to fall in bounds, keep the clock going as you see things right there start to get out of control between the two players. Yeah, and this is where you want to keep your head at this point in the ball game because it could still go either way. Jalen Harris was the uh, Panther player that was involved with that mishap there. I didn't quite see who was there for Jackson State. Uh, but, no, this is what uh, Coach Hendrick was talking about earlier when he got his team on the sidelines. And he said, hey, let's not make silly mistakes. Let's not get involved in that kind of stuff at that point. Let's take this one home. And also you got to remember, Jackson State lost two players thus far this game due to rejections. Of, of just bad decisions. So let's see. They're going to make a call on the play, and we will see who this one will go against. So the two personal fouls will offset Amari Catchings, number 60 for Jackson State. And on the other side for Prairie View was Jalen Harris, the two culprits on the play. But the big important thing on the play was the run got the first down. Yeah, got the first down and keep Jackson State offense on the field. And hopefully they can kind of wrap this game up with that first down. 50 seconds to go. And... Uh, Prairie View with two timeouts to go in the ball game, so still have. Excuse me, they have one, Jackson State has one timeout remaining, and Prairie View is out of timeouts already, so they cannot stop the clock. So this is it. This should be it. Yeah. You would think they can force a turnover, and strip, strip the ball from the running back, and try to do a scoop and score. They'll get back into this game. For the Panthers, you look at some of the numbers. Trazon Connolly, the freshman, 19 and 30 for 165. But he had three touchdowns along with the one interception. And as far as rushing, it's Trazon Connolly again with 12 carries for 110 yards. But he did have the 72-yard touchdown run. So he's the leading passer, the leading rusher in this ball game. Of course, Tucker, we expected a big game from him. 14 carries for only 24 yards. So the Tigers' defense did a heck of a job shutting him down. And you see Hayes just taking a knee on the play. And the officials come in quickly to stop it. And right now what you see in, you know, from Jackson State is the best formation of the whole game. That's the victory formation. As they take a knee and try to milk this clock out and earn this victory here at home in front of their home fans. You know, I, I look at the, the Prairie View effort today, and it's almost like a pitcher who's on the mound, and he doesn't have his best stuff, but, he, but he's trying everything he can try. I mean, they did a great job of hanging in this ball game and giving themselves a chance late. As we go to the final 15 seconds of the game, give me some of your final thoughts on this one. I was impressed how Prairie View bounced back after being down 24 points in the first quarter. But you got to give credit to Coach Hammond and the Jackson State Tigers as they came out with an executed plan and they perfect that plan throughout this game, earning the victory in front of their home fans. It did. And if you had to, who would be your player of the game? Well, to me, I thought the quarterback did a good job. Jared Harris. He did an excellent job managing the game as a quarterback position. Until Johnson went down, I had him as a player of the game for Jackson State. But I would give it to Jared Hayes, the senior quarterback. Jared Hayes, the senior quarterback, coming in, playing a great game, 17-27 to 27 for 150 yards and a touchdown. But he did a super job of managing the football game and not making big mistakes. The one interception in the second half. So, everyone, for Lemont Williams and our entire crew, I'm Butch Alcindor saying so long. Our final score today is 34-28, Jackson State the winner. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on the family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.